from Times Square, the crossroads of the world. It's All Night with Joey Reynolds. I'm Big J Sorensen from CBS FM 101.1. Our guest tonight, musical guest, international singing star, Giada Valenti. Emmy Award-winning comedian, Dave Koenig. Star of the Broadway hit, Ted, actor Todd Robbins. Comic impressionist mimicking Lou Costello and Curly <laughs> Howard and other large people, Bob Greenberg. Award-winning independent filmmaker and psychic, Sean David Morton. Director of the upcoming Staten Island track, Vin Gatulo. And musical guest, Cuban-born singer, Eric El Aparicio. And now, the guy who has had more temper tent without a on in one show than singer Chris Brown's had in a lifetime, Joey Reynolds. No. So, did they tell you Lady Gaga's here tonight? No. No? no? Did they tell you Michael Bublé's on here tonight? No. Oh, well, they're, they're not. <laughs> Who are you? Deborah. Where are you from? New York. Yeah, I know. Well, that's a, a New York's a state. New York Where? City. Are you from the city? From, from Manhattan? Yes. Who are you holding up here? Mom. Hi, Mom. How are you? I'm fine. Where are you from? New York also. See, I, I want to get, you know, everybody we've talked to has been from some other place in the world, and tonight we finally got I some New York. I Florida now. Oh, see? You're another one. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go to Publix and get some peanut yes. butter? That's what I thought. Well, yeah. nice seeing me. Too cold. Okay. Too cold? She's got to go home. She's <laughs> Florida. Yeah, I know. They're cold All here. Right, let's, what do we got going on in here? Is well, we have, we have a musical show? guest coming up. We're doing the show from yeah. in here tonight? Uh-huh. Well, yeah. we're going to go in there in a second. Yeah, we are. we are. Are you raising your voice at me? No, not at all. I'm you not sound being like testy. a disc jockey. Not being testy at all, Joey. <laughs> we just want to get the show going is what we want to do because we right. have a lot to do tonight. All right. Now, see, there's a police. Do you see all the police cars over there? They're yeah. all lined up. we yeah. got all those motorcycle cops yeah. lined up. I see them. Yeah. You're under arrest. Really? It's what did plus. I do? What did I do? <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? Come big on, show tonight. come on over and say hello. Yeah, big show tonight. Come on. <laughs> come on, let me get this. You're, wait a minute. Are you gonna call a neighbor and tell him you're on television? My son. You're Is gonna call your son? On Tom Warner. Yeah. What's no 161 on Tom Warner? 161, Tyrell. Hurry up and turn to it. They said we're on now. Say hi to Leah. What's your name? Hi. Lisa and Talia from Harlem. Hi, I live in Harlem. Where do you live? West or east? East, but I'm from the I west. I live on side. the east. What? Which street? 114. Why, are you coming over? Are you kidding me? Are you really on 114, the yeah. north side? You want me to get my exact address on no, the air? I have everybody over the house that. tonight. Hi, say hi. We're just coming from Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Where are you coming from seeing what? What do we see? Uh, what did you um, see? You saw what did you the see? Adams the family. Adams family. It Isn't was, that funny? It was hilarious. I thought it was great. Did you like the now, old lady in there? She was hilarious, and now I know my family's normal. She's been on our show. <laughs> She's been on our show. That's Jackie Hoffman. Jackie Hoffman. Oh, Hoffman's Jackie Hoffman is yeah. really Is really she good. attractive? Very. Oh, out of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your name here? Come on over here. Were you hiding from me? What's your name? Hi. Who are you? My name is Rosalind. You're not with this family? No. Oh, then get out of here. <laughs> All right, who's the band we have? Uh, I believe it's going to be uh, Ariel Aparicio, am I correct? Are we ready? Are we ready, ready for this? Yes, all right, We're let's roll. All right, Ariel, play with you guys. Let's go. Entertain the crowd Start out here. The There's Vin. He's on tonight. Judgment by doom, arriving by night. Show for the day, right in the line. The bio's not soon, Christopher Sides. So then we, she's one of a kind.
Shot down and fly Trip by the stairs Fed to her gods Both tortoise and hare Good deal, Ariel. Now you're not going to hear a lot of applause because everybody's on the oh, other side okay. of the cage that's over okay. here. Yeah, they're, all, they're all outside. We, we Hi, hey, Hi, folks. How are you? How are you, Jay? So, Ariel, is that the name of the group or your name? It's my name, but it's the name of the group. All right. So, yeah. hi, folks. How are you? You can, hey. you can shoot them if you want to, but not uh, with a camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't want any blood spill. No, not, no, not no, tonight. No, not tonight. So, this is the city that never sleeps. So I've been told. And the country that never sleeps is Libya. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, But don't you hit that drum. Don't you dare do that. <laughs> you think you are with Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> I'm not going to kiss you on the lips either. <laughs> the hell, the most famous thing you ever did was to kiss a guy on the lips. Yeah, has he never seen? I guess he doesn't. Has never been to the village. <laughs> really get out much. You go to me. Chelsea. You know, I mean, this is not anything new. <laughs> but uh, your your band is. Uh, is you want to introduce everybody in the band? Sure, I'd love tomorrow. to. Uh, this is Tomas Marsh on guitar. You know, Tom. He also is a teacher for you. I, I he uh, filled me in. Yeah. Yes, Pemberton Roach on bass. Dave Berger on drums yeah. and Steve Dawson on guitar. Well, Dave, I don't like. Yeah. But it's nice to have him here. Anyway, don't you hit that thing again. <laughs> I hate that. Uh, you know, we, we got a show that's on all, all across uh, New York right now, in Connecticut and New Jersey. Nice. But NBC is wanting this to be on around the world. But they figured they'd start in a smaller city. Hmm. So, you know, I mean, NBC does they do choice. things a little half uh, backwards, whatever <laughs> that other word is. Uh, you know, I'm not allowed to talk openly about this, but, uh, you know, most people who do these shows make a lot of money. You know, I mean, I, I sign, well, you know, you want to have a, a, a six-figure job that would be for, nice. for, uh, for one year is what, you know, what I, what I wanted. But instead, I have a one-figure job for five years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It, it just doesn't figure. <laughs> now, you people out there, can you wave? Because I want to put you on camera there. There you go. See, now, now you're on television. <laughs> it's called All Night with Joey Reynolds. Now, remember my name. But you notice the All Night is bigger than my name. <laughs> so that means it'll be All Night with whoever the hell they want to put in here next week. <laughs> I get the small print. You know, there's a life story uh, that's going on about uh, Jerry Weintraub, who discovered, you probably see he's got a book now and a picture about him. He's the guy who handled Frank Sinatra and uh, most recently Brad Pitt and George Clooney. And he's, they do a doc there's a documentary film. So I invited him to be on the show. Of course, you know, we don't usually go for the celebrities, but we go for the guys who handle celebrities. And, and I, I was thinking, you know, you deserve to have a better management team. You might want to have my guy. You know, I'm handled by the Blue Man Group, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, they, they really, I've gotten a good booking. I'm, I'm opening in Afghanistan next week <laughs> at the Comedy Cave, 
And uh, you know, you might you might want to be there with me. Don't hit that drum. Yeah, I'm really going to piss me we're off. Gonna, we're, 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 busy, <laughs> we're busy next week. Uh, you guys want to wave again because we want to make sure you're still alive out there. It's welcome to Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> it's only about eight degrees. All right, now uh, one other thing I want to mention before we uh, before we dismiss you tonight is your shoes. Hey, Dan, can you bring that? Dan, 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 stop working the crowd. Come over here for a minute. I want to show the shoes. Ariel is, it, Ariel is like in The Little Mermaid. As in The Little Mermaid. Exactly. That's a girl's yeah, name. Yeah. Well, wait, You're not going to kiss Jimmy second, Kimmel. Wait a second. You we want to focus in on the shoes. Right, no, I want, yeah, shoes. no, no, no. I, these are bad. Yeah. These are really, now you, but you, you're cool. I mean, you know, I don't want to think, no, I'm not no, making no, funny. No, 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 no. You know, some people will spend half a million dollars to go on Jay Leno and he'll make fun of their tie. <laughs> you know, they've waited to be on that show for eight years. So I'm not doing that to you. There's a point I want to make to these shoes. Now these are the same shoes that I don't know if you know this. You know Tony Orlando, right? Tony of course, Orlando. Yeah. You know he he tried to commit suicide. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped off of his shoe. <laughs> and just for that bad joke, yeah, I that was right. <laughs> Now I want to show your shoes here. See these? Now that's what? Are you trying to be taller? I both things. Yes, I Why am. don't I'm you just to be help. taller and and try to be cool? But let me just get on my knees and interview. You. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so much simpler than you having to do this thing. These, these are the real things. They're, they're really from the 70s. They're, they're vintage. Vintage? Yeah. Yeah, from Bozo the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're nice. I'm just joking. I just wanted to make fun of somebody, and you're in my way. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> now hit the drum. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go sit down. Uh, we went outside earlier tonight. I worked the crowd that was outside. Uh, it's a Reynolds wrap. I want to show this. You guys are going to come back and play again, Ariel. Yes, great. And you're, you're wonderful. Thank you. And I Thank love you. the way you ended that song. Actually, had an ending. <laughs> Most songs fade. You know, you got to. <laughs> but you got an ending. Yeah, we worked hard on that. All right, let's do the Reynolds wrap, and then we'll come back here with these guys. What happened today? Are we okay. rolling tape? Yes. Yeah. Good. Let's go over here. Let's talk to the to the Japanese. <laughs> I think. Probably Korean. Something like Can't that. tell. <laughs> you get scared. You're used to. Where are you guys? Where are you guys from? Where are you from? Uh, from Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Uh. You don't look Asian. <laughs> oh, oh, the home country, right? Well, look over at the camera. Come on over here. Hello. <laughs> I want you to meet a beautiful. What are you hiding from? <laughs> Is this, where, where are you from? I come from Vietnam. Oh, Vietnamese? Where? Ho Chi Minh City, or yeah, are you Ho from? Chi Minh City. Yeah, I've been there. Come on over here. You got a, you know, do you remember the war in Vietnam? Uh, yeah. No, you don't. How old are you? I'm um, 19. You don't remember, at 19 years old? You don't, <laughs> come on, oh, look at that girl. Hey, you didn't even want to be on camera. You get out of here. <laughs> what's your name? Zoe. What's yours? Charlie. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Hamilton, Lenham. Massachusetts, yeah. Hamilton. Oh yeah, we don't have anybody from here anymore. You know, nobody, nobody no, in Times Square is ever from All New tourists. York. <laughs> yeah, you know, people from New York go. We like to pretend we're not tourists by not opening maps and look like we're no, we know where we're going. If you want to pretend that you're not tourists, don't come here. Uh -huh. <laughs> what's your name? Kayla. Hi, Kayla. I'm Joey. Good Hello. to meet you. What's Thank your name? You. Mark. Hi, Mark. And what's your name? Jada. Don't talk to strangers. <laughs> what's your name? Danny. Don't touch strangers. And what's your name? Desiree. Don't ever go near a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not strangers anymore. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, see, I, I have that effect on kids. <laughs> Come on over here. Come on, say hello. hello. What's your name? I know what your name is already. Your last name is Wynn, right? My name's Andrew. It's always Wynn. Everybody's name Wynn. What's, no, your, what's this, your first name? This guy from South Korea and I'm from Cambodia. Oh, no. I, wow. is, I'd go with Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, we are mixed. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we have to let Saigons be Saigons. Oh, Saigon, the name. Because the war is annoying us. Yeah, I know, I get it. Yeah, but Massachusetts is all right, right? You know what they call it, right? No. What is Massachusetts. <laughs> Put that on the air, dude. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's a tough, it's a, you got the world's worst drivers. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah, I know, I'm glad you admit it, though. So put them on camera saying, wait a minute, watch my lips. Massachusetts has the world's worst drivers. It, yeah, it's true. I'm yeah. pretty sure he's one of them. <laughs> I'm here, yes, tonight. I was inside. Is that your makeup running? N no, I have to do my makeup, yeah. <laughs> you let me. Why outside. do you want to put makeup? A beautiful lady like you doesn't need makeup. Yeah, you'll see the difference later. I will, a difference. I don't want a difference. I like the way you are now. If I see a difference, you'll scare me. Oh, no, you won't. Did you ever see me in makeup? Yes, well, hi, guys. Every night. Come on. So, what, what do you guys do? Um, Where do you live? Illinois. Where? Chicago. Oh, that's a bad city. You gotta move. 
<laughs> what if you come? What if your mother comes back over here and wonders what you've been doing? What are you going to tell her? Come on, what are you going to tell her you were doing? Talking. Is that your father behind you? No. Uh oh, <laughs> he's hiding. Is this all your family? Yes. You're a busy guy. <laughs> Where do you live? Oh, Philadelphia. Oh, then you're not going to watch. You don't even like me. <laughs> Are you going to be in New York tomorrow? You go well, back yeah, to I'm the, I'm in the mic. Here you go. You're going back? I'm going back tonight. You're going to, you're not be able, going to be able to see right it. Right here on the mic. You have to talk on the mic. You know, he's not going to be able to see it tomorrow. I think he's in That's right, and we don't want him to see it. <laughs> Maybe on the internet, I'll try. Yes, but we want to say hello to you. We want to say that it's very nice to have you here because we love foreigners, people from Philly. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's your name? Dave Williams. They have a very nice family you got there, nice kids. Thank you. Thank I told you them they were too friendly. <laughs> they got to not be so friendly. Now, you're from Chicago? Yes. Now, are you going to get mad if I tell you about Chicago? No. Are you from Chicago? I'm originally, I was born in Chicago, moved to uh, outside Detroit, grew up outside Detroit. You know it's the heart of America. Yeah. Now, Giada, you know what? You got, she's, she even tuned up. Hello. Now, you know about <laughs> Chicago? Yes, I've they been. call it the heart of America. You know why? Because it ain't got no brains. <laughs> oh, no. He didn't get mad. Uh, See, that's good, Mr. Williams. You're a nice guy. That's why your kids are great. They are adorable. <laughs> I know. Nice family. How come we're meeting nice people tonight? What happened? Hey, look, my husband is there. Oh, uh, then I can't run around with you anymore. <laughs> your husband is there? I think he's picking me up for my yeah. makeup. What are you calling him? Oh. No, I was, he called me. All right, let's go do the show. We've had quite enough fun out here. It's a beautiful night though, isn't it? Yes. All right. Is it time to go to work? It's time to go to work and to do some serious stuff. Yeah, come on now. This is serious stuff now. We got to go into the money headquarters of the world. Oh, wow. How about that? You'll turn into a uh, bank. <laughs> yeah, we're at the NASDAQ building. You probably know 43rd and Broadway, and uh, this is one of the places where they announced that the Dow Jones went down. Uh, we're going to be right back uh, after we take a break. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Down and fly, trip by the stairs, fed to her cubs, go tortoise and hair. She can show us. When New York celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Damn, it's something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop, weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. Oh, I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. 
LX New York, weekdays at 5. We're all over town. Well, this is the first yawn. I see we're, got, we're gonna have one of those nights tonight. Uh, Gary Shapiro is the chairman of the Consumer Electronics Association, which is the organization that started, uh, oh my God, it was, I guess, 40 years ago or something. And they, uh, they, the Consumer Electronics Association has a consumer electronics show every year, which is the biggest trade show in the world, period. It's in Las Vegas. Originally, it was started with Jack Wayman, who's been on the air with us a couple of, couple of weeks ago. Again, Jack's a, a good friend. And the uh, Consumer Electronics uh, Show used to be in Chicago, which I was just making fun of a little while ago. And they moved it to the Javits Center in New York and now in Las Vegas, where it's got uh, the biggest attendance of any. It's a trade show, though. It's not, not, not for the public. Mm -hmm. and, and Gary Shapiro has been doing this for 25 years now. He's the, he's the chairman. And he looks a lot younger, yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, but here he is. Here's Gary Shapiro. Gary, come on out and play with us for a little bit. <laughs> Walk through that magic door. <laughs> okay, okay. Gee, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you since Vegas. How are you? Hi, nice Jay. Hi, Jay. How are you? How are you? Wow. Bring any gizmos with you? No, they, no, don't say so There's don't a sign at the front that said, like, turn everything off. So I took 15 things out of my pocket and I turned them off. Now, Gary, we, uh, we, we see each other every year, and, and one of the reasons for this show is because of the Consumer Electronics Show. Well, one of the reasons for every show is the Consumer <laughs> We wouldn't have shows without TV sets and radios and VCRs or DVRs and computers, would we? No. But, okay. But, I mean, I got inspired. By, uh, by attending the shows every year, which you, you've been putting together. I mean, you know, you didn't know me a few years back when I was a little crazier, but I was hanging around and I would watch all of the keynote speakers and go to some of the conferences, because you can't go to all of them. There's too many activities. Oh, there's 300 conferences. It would take a few years to go to all of them. Correct. But I would go to the keynotes. The keynotes, every year you've done a bigger and better job. And you've gotten even more involved than you ever were. Now, I'm going to tell this on the air. I don't know. For those people who are in the trade, and you know whether they have a store or whether they work in the industry, uh, Gary has been the head of the Consumer Electronics Association. He's been the chairman for a while. And um, I don't know. How many years is it? Since 25 years ago. 1991, I've yeah. been in charge. But you, you know, 20 years in charge. Every year, it's gotten better, honestly. This year, you outdid yourself. And you did something very different. Usually, you'll have a keynote speaker. And a couple of years ago, you introduced the chairman of General Motors who brought his cars. And he introduced the Volt, mm -hmm. Rick Wagner. Right, right. And it was the reason you embraced the automobile industry at, in, in those days was because years ago, I think General Motors was the first to have electronics in the cars. I think they had Delco or one of the, what did they General have? Motors did have Delco. Yeah. Until Delco filed for Chapter 11. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, but years ago, you didn't used to have or car Delphi, companies. Or Delphi, Delphi. And, and also, uh, I think this last couple of years has been Ford. You yes. know, with Alan, yes. uh, Alan, what's his name? Alan Mal Malali. Malali. He's CEO, very, CEO very nice. CEO of Ford, he used to head Boeing. He's transformed the car into, it's more or less about the car and more about technology. And he's defined Ford as a technology company, plus they didn't take bailout money. And his, and his partner with the electronics is Microsoft, right? That's part of it. They've done a yeah. lot more beyond Microsoft in terms of really taking a car and turning it into a portable computer, internet access device, and everything else. And, and plus safety features that are huge. It's exciting. It's exciting, Absolutely. you know, that we, we have uh, a world now where there's an office in a car. Yes. And uh, all that's missing is a fax machine. And I don't think we're going to fax money well, anymore. Well, we're, we're a little bit beyond <laughs> fax, but, you know, if you think about it, what we've done is we've taken the living room and the office, as you say, and turned it into the car, and soon we're going to have Internet access wherever we drive. Yeah. And, and the next thing, that 10 years from now, most cars will have collision avoidance. And then 20 years from now, the debate will be, you know, do you have to be an able-bodied driver to be in a car that's driving by itself? And the disability community will come and say, no, you shouldn't have to be. And that'll be liberating for them. So 30, 40, 50 years from now, you know, driving may be a thing of the past. There'll be cars that drive themselves. I don't think you thought that while you were sitting here tonight, you were going to have Batman behind you. 
you know. I just uh, came up with that right as we were speaking. You got Jay. the Batmobile. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> giving you an exclusive. <laughs> uh, now, you know, a uh, couple of things have to be brought up tonight besides Batman. Where is he? Is he hiding behind me somewhere? We, usually we have Spider-Man, but tonight the Batmobile. <laughs> But the, the thing that's, that uh, I want to do, and I learned from the consumer electronics shows, is to take all of the electronics and apply them to the way we use them at home. Mm -hmm. Now, I think years ago, we used to not have the great electronics. We had a desire to have things that worked. Now we have so many things that are ahead of us. I think the electronics is ahead of, of what I can afford right now. No, you're very, very successful. You have, you have a phenomenal career. You're, you're the epitome here. You can afford all this stuff because, you know, every year it gets better. Yeah. The picture gets better. The screens get skinnier, and they do more things. Now, you know, you take a, a smartphone with all the different applications, the thousands, hundreds of thousands of applications. They could keep you out of getting speeding tickets because they tell you where the radar is. Mm -hmm. They could tell you how fast you walk or run or ski and how far you go, and they can get you back home with navigational systems. They actually save you money. Because, you know, you don't have to, when you rent a car, buy a nav rented navigational system. There's all sorts of things now which electronics are saving money. And, and the next big wave of electronics saving money is going to be in home health care. Yeah. Wait till you see that coming. Boy, instead of having to go to a doctor, you could do the diagnosis remotely. You could test yourself. You could do all sorts of things. So cut down on doctor's visits. The Nokia chairman was on. Uh, he, he, he was last year, last January. And he showed the banking on a phone, on the Nokia phone. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we had just had the tragedy in, in uh, New Orleans. And he said that this, was way, this is the way to do banking in the future. And now, of course, we've had some international tragedies. And, it, and it's come to light, including the communication in Egypt this year, which was necessary, was by phone. Do you think Yeah, but except Hosni Mubarak shut down the internet. That was a big mistake. And now one of those uh, authoritarian leaders has done that since then in the Mideast. But the reality is without these technologies, first of all, let's go back. We wouldn't have had the Soviet Union Iron Curtain fall without the facts in the VCR. Um, and all these regime changes pro-democracy are all based on technology and social media and the Internet. And if you want to talk about the, you know, the most totalitarian countries in the world, North Korea, they ban all technology. You can't even own a cell phone. Cuba, they're controlled. And China, as you know, restricts access to the Internet. With Google, too. Yeah. Right, Absolutely. Now, now what, what we have here is complete freedom. However, what we need to have, if, if the cable shuts down, there's nothing. So you need to have over the air. Cell phones over the air. Cell phone is towers. Over the air radio, FM and AM. And now digital television, which we're on right now. We're on digital television plus cable. But if they shut the cable down, we're still available. We're digital television. Well, you're, you, you will have a choice of how you're available, whether it's fiber optic, yeah. which is cable. I have that in Virginia where I live with Fios. Yeah. You'll have over the power line, you'll be able to get internet. You'll have the cable, which is the most popular in the U.S. now, that broadband right. to the home, twisted pair and telephone, old telephone lines. And then there's all the different flavors of wireless with 3G and 4G and the smartphones and much more coming. So, and, of course, there's over-the-air broadcast and, of course, there's satellite. So you have all these different competing ways to get to people, which is great because then yeah. you have multiple ways of getting. You have uh, redundancy, so if there's ever a tragedy, you have different ways of getting information. And, of course, you have these cellular phones, just people call you and say something's going on. Well, this, this show here is, is go, it's geared for triple casting, you know, radio, television, Internet. And the, and the handheld is probably the most popular use for a certain demographic, young demographic. Uh, the older people like the big screens, you know. I mean, I don't know how, about 3D, but they like the 60-foot screen. Yeah, but now the tablet is coming in so quickly. Yeah, um, and, and, and the tablet also includes the e-book readers and you know Amazon now has sold more electronic books than they have physical copy books this year. Hopefully yours. The comeback. Now you know what you were doing was you were working on, on this particular, get a, get a close up of this Dan because I want everybody to see this when they see it in the airport they gotta at least buy this before they get on a plane. Uh, the comeback is Gary's book. Now he's more interested in social conditions in our country than he admits. Uh, although the uh, electronics uh, industry is a business, a lot of businesses, and it's a business of the country right now to be inventive and to promote science. 
And, 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 and in the comeback, you have a plan in here, which I've read, you know, because I read your book and I've known you a little bit. And this, this particular uh, work that you're doing right now is important for our nation right now. I mean, this is our country. Our whole country is relying well, on Well, look, we have this. generations of Americans that have sacrificed to give us something, whether it's, it's going to war. In fact, we still have you know, kids in Iraq and Afghanistan risking their lives on them. The least we could do is to do something. And our country is in major trouble. The numbers yeah. are there. We're going the wrong direction. Uh, we're spending more than we're making by a phenomenal amount, and it just keeps getting worse. So we have to do something. And you could either raise taxes, you could cut spending, or you could grow. So I, I think we're going to have to do all three, but this is focused on innovation and growth. We're the best country in the world for a lot of reasons. We have the most diverse population. We're a melting pot. We have the First Amendment. We have an immigrant culture. We encourage people to fail at businesses, and then they start something new. We're the only country in the world like that. We own the Internet. We have more entrepreneurs. We own Hollywood and the motion picture industry and the music industry and publishing and, and drug industry and medicine. We're the best in so many areas that require innovation and creativity, and we have to preserve that. And we have to say, this is what we're good at, and this is how we're going to stay good. And that's what this is about. It's about the future of America, and it's about the fact that we have to start focusing on our long-term strategy. I'm not asking for a penny of government spending, because we have too much of that. But I'm saying, let's do some of the things that make sense, so we can keep growing, keep innovating, so you guys and your talk shows could have things to talk about still. <laughs> Well, I don't think I'll ever run. He'll never run. <laughs> no, I mean, I always tell everybody I'm on, I'm on CBS without the C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, you, you're, you, you were at Time Warner tonight. You were at the Samsung Center. Yes, I was. And what did you talk about? Innovation, the comeback, how yeah. innovation will restore the American dream. I mean, the fact is a very diverse group of reporters and others focusing on this fact that, look, we have two political parties that are in opposite corners. And, you know, they're playing a lot of games, but, but they're not focusing on the long-term interests of the country. And they're not making the decisions we pay them to make, which is say, look, set priorities. We can't have two wars, now three wars, uh, yeah. two stimulus packages, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, cash for clunkers, first-time home buyers, and say we're choosing priorities. Mm -hmm. And most of what we're doing, frankly, is just taking money from our future kids and giving it to us now so we feel better. Yeah. Now, you, you know, uh, the three presidents who are still with us were together to honor George Bush Sr. And, uh, and there's a little love fest going on between Clinton and, and George Bush yes, Sr. Yes. now. It's, it's very lovely to watch them together because Clinton has acknowledged that he admired him greatly and, and uh, ran against him and won. But also that they're such good friends and they work the, the, the countries pretty well. You know, uh, they're, they're very compassionate. And, uh, and, and Bill Clinton had made a comment uh, in Washington today. He said, you know, I'm, uh, I, I, I was opposite him and I fought him, but he, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But he says, but you know, uh, there are more important things than fighting each other. And the whole world needs to really come together. And I, I think it's really, we're, we're getting to be a little bit more of a community. Now, the Consumer Electronics Show, to go back to that again, that's a community. I mean, 140,000 plus people. It's a, it's a nice sized community. And you have put how many people together now? I mean, you, you're gone from, wait a minute, let, let me say this because I know this. It was a $60 billion business and now it's like $265 billion. Is that right? Something like well, that? Well, you're, you're close. I mean, our, our friend Jack Wayman started that show in New York City in 1967. And it was just like everything, like, like, well, like a Microsoft or a Google or even a CES, we start out tiny. And then we grow, but still the theory of the show, we're the largest event in, in the country, yeah. if not the world, 2,700 exhibitors. And what we, you know, the truth is we build that show so anyone with an idea can have access to that entire marketplace. And yeah, a lot of people feel they own that show and they do. Now, I know you're a modest guy. I mean, I know you a little bit now. And I'm going to say something uh, on the air in front of the public, because you would never say this about yourself. You're just not that kind of guy. But, you know, you have done a wonderful job. You really have. I mean, it's gotten better and better. Not because it's bigger, it's better. I've learned so much from what you've put together in the last couple of years. And now this year, I started to say it and I, and I got off my purpose. Um, this year on the keynote addresses, you put more than one person there. Like you had the chairman of General Electric, the chairman of Xerox, and uh, Cisco. also Cisco. John Chambers of Cisco. You put them all together. Jeffrey I mean, you know, right? I, I, this is, you're not gonna see that anywhere. You're not, you, you wouldn't get that anywhere. 
So did you think to do that, honestly? I mean, I'm going to ask you and nail you on this. Well, the theory was we get these three major corporate leaders, great American companies, and we talk about what's in this book about innovation and what we have to do. And there was a remarkable, enthusiastic, and passionate consensus among the three that we have to have better K through 12 education. We have to focus on getting the best and brightest people from around the world. We have to open our borders to free trade because we've isolated ourselves compared to the rest of the world. And we're going in the wrong direction as a country. And when you have corporate leaders that employ hundreds of thousands of people and are the leaders in innovation saying, we're on the wrong track, you know, maybe America will wake up. And, and it's whether it's the book, it's the show itself, or having panels like that or discussions like this one. We can't, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And, you know, one thing, I'm, I have a three-year-old son. And I want a better world for him. And I don't want to be the, the generation that gives our kids a lousy future. And we're heading in that direction, and that's why I'm concerned. After the last show, uh, the chairman of General Electric was appointed by the president. Beyond Jeffrey Himmel, the CEO, yes. Yeah. Right after that. And, and I don't got, think that's why, but it was Well, good I think time. it has a lot to do with it. I mean, you know, you're really you're, you're, you're presenting uh, uh, people who have some brains and some ideas and innovators, you know. And the, and the other thing was, uh, which I, I took note of, uh, you had the president and the chairperson of Verizon. Ivan Seidenberg, yes. Yeah, and, I, and Ivan had made a comment that uh, they are partnered, and, they, and you partner up if you want to be successful. And they partnered with 40 companies. Now, from General Electric, they didn't partner. They bought 600 companies. But you've got all these different styles. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I learned these things from the stuff that you put together, and I want to acknowledge it. I just want to tell you that. Yeah. And in putting our little plan together here, which you were part of tonight, thank you, and you see there's some people outside, uh, the idea was to, to, to be here in a, in, a, in a setting where we're really with the, this is interaction, this is social networking. You know, and to have you a part of this, I've been telling you that we're, I wanted to do this for a little while now, and we, and we put it together with, we've got the television piece together now, and then we get the internet going in another week or so where we're viral with it, and where I then can Skype and do all the things that we know how to do and go to handheld and, and, and use the phones for different reasons, and then, of course, radio. We're going we're gonna to really be cooking from, from your show. Well, well, that's what I like about you. You epitomize America. You are a lifelong learner. You're always trying something new. You're going after innovation, and you always want to do it better. And that's the American spirit that I think makes us different from the rest of the world. But I got it from you. Not and from I, me. I don't, I don't invent this stuff that's so great. The work that you've done. It's the work you've you, done. And, I, and I, I always tell you that, but you always... You, you laugh at it. Because like I don't invent this stuff. But you but put I it am, together. I am enthusiastic and, 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 you know, about and I'm, I'm so proud to know you, and I, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be and where likewise, I And likewise, Joe. I wouldn't be where I am if it were not for your work. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I don't mind admitting it. I think it's to your credit. So That's the right comeback there. is how innovation will help our country or save it if we can. I don't think we have to save the country. I think we need to just move forward with it. We have so many wonderful people here. I mean, you can't go to that show for a week like I did or four days and, and, and go to all those conferences and not think that we don't, have, we, we don't have a brain trust. We have a great brain trust. We have great people in this country. We're going to figure it out. We're, we're, we're going to figure would, it out. Uh, Andy Grove of Intel, who says, you got, you have to stay number one, you have to be paranoid. We're the number one show in the country. We're paranoid. Intel is the number one country, a company as is Microsoft and Google. We have Qualcomm. We have a lot of number one companies here. Yeah. But you have to be paranoid because your competition is coming. There's others in the world that are copying you. You have to stay ahead and you have to be hungry. I want to make sure the U.S. stays hungry. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. Too. Thank I you. Thank really you for having appreciate me. It. All right. So uh, Gary Shapiro, uh, get to come back. Also coming up is Bob Greenberg and Esther Q will be out here. And we got Jay the Jock Hello. sitting next to me. He wants to play a record because whenever he feels nervous, <laughs> he, gets, up a he gets jock itch. <laughs> yeah, really? We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the Beatles, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck. If you're like me, you probably don't have a lot of free time to exercise and keep yourself in shape. For me, the answer is the Ab Glider from Proform. I can't tell you how much I love this amazing machine. It's a great fat-burning cardio workout, too. And it's fun. Unlike other ab machines, the Ab Glider combines circular and crunch motions for a fast, fun workout of your entire midsection. 
you engage more muscles, get a better cardio workout, and burn twice the calories of other ab machines. I went from an 11 to a size 4. 20 inches total. It's really easy and it's fun. With this offer, you'll get an onboard workout computer, Elizabeth's 3-Minute Rapid Results DVD, and her amazing abs instructional DVD, plus her amazing abs eating guide, a $159 value, free. Try the Ab Glider now for 30 days, risk-free, for as little as $14.95. If you're not totally satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. You can't find a better way to get better abs at a better price. And getting started is easy. Just call or go online to proform.com. Are you holding the remote right now? It's nice to be in control, isn't it? To fast forward to the good parts. Oh, hold on. We're getting to the good part. If you're receiving a structured settlement from a lawsuit, you know it is not easy to wait for payments, especially when it could be 10 or 20 years before you collect all your money. What you may not know is that you can skip ahead and receive a lump sum of cash now. Call CBC Settlement Funding for a free, no obligation offer about your structured settlement. Whether you access all or just a portion of your future payments, we put you in control so you can fast forward and collect your money now. If you need cash now, Call the number on your screen and find out how CBC Settlement Funding can help. We'll guide you through the process so you can take control of your finances and get your money faster. Call CBC Settlement Funding today. When you hear PC, do you think of politically correct or are you thinking of your computer? You know what? They're outdated already. What? They're, they were saying the other day, I read something, that, that, that PCs are over. They are? Yes. Well, then I have my bio fixed today, <laughs> yeah. my Sony, which is a PC. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's I had a guy, I, You have to have someone young come over. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, my daughter was downloading music. Yeah, of course. I think you're not supposed to do that without paying. Oh, uh, Yeah. You go to, have you gone to Bing? You know about Bing? That's well, yeah. a server. You yeah, know? it is. Yeah. yeah. So what's a, uh, it's a search engine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you, uh, have I don't do anything illegally, Joey. Why ever. not? Because it's against the law. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and the people don't get the credit they, they deserve. They them. don't get they, the money. Right. That they, that's what that I mean. Yeah. yeah. It's I not know. fair. I have people downloading this show that don't Absolutely. pay me. They shouldn't pay, they should pay you a yeah. lot of money for that. Like NBC. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fat chance. Speaking of a load, <laughs> we got uh, Bob Greenberg coming out here. Hi, Bob. How are you? He played Laurel and Hardy. He played both of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be funny. And, and Avon and Costello. He played both Avon and Costello. Good to see you. Hello, hey, Bob. How are you, handsome? How are you? Good, Good to, to see you. Me again. This, is, this is Esther Koo. Hi, Esther. Esther how are you? Hello. Good to meet you. Wonderful. Nice to Come meet you. Come sit down. It's quite sit. a coup that you brought her here. Oh, yes. It's quite <laughs> a coup. <laughs> and I see you have a sidekick. You have a cop on No, I don't have a sidekick. He he's not, not going to kick him? No, I have a friend who needs a job. And, oh. uh, you know, he's here to, uh, to That's so nice of you. So take my money, which I don't have. <laughs> Aren't we friends too, Joey? Aren't we friends too? No, no, too? we're not that Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's a hair floating in this. Oh, oh, kind of, oh my God, I've heard that oh, story my on my goodness. cheesecake. I don't want to hear that again. <laughs> oh. You know about that story, right? Yes, I do. Yes, what about I do. it? I, there was a hair on your cheesecake? I have, I had cheesecake contests with, you know, I make the best cheesecake in the world. We sure, sure. We're told by, mm -hmm. used to sell them at Bloomingdale's. Oh. And I had a contest uh, when I was on the radio and I had every kind of New Yorker sitting around a table gathering mm -hmm. to test every cheesecake imaginable in New York, from Saturdays right. to Juniors, to mine, to Lindy's, every, every cheesecake. And I, and I had the hands down one. There was a terrorist, a biker, a lesbian. <laughs> I had 15 people tasting all these cakes That's and my cake friend. came in number one and the guy from the Carnegie said there's a hair in the cake and uh, I said wait a minute and I look and it was a blonde hair I said I made that cake I don't have blonde <laughs> <laughs> that mess on my hair it was planted so when you go to the Carnegie now and you see my picture in the back room yeah. it says New York's number one cheesecake the Carnegie you won by a hair <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's what a it means. Blonde tan. Yeah. It was blonde, yeah. Mm. So Q, what do you do, Miss Q? Q, I'm a comedian. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. She's doing That's the cool. Actors Temple uh, We're doing the benefit, benefit show on Monday. When, what time do you worship? At the... <laughs> we'll be worshiping at 7 p.m. on Monday at the Actors Temple. 47th <laughs> Street what's between your, 8th and 9th. What's your first name again? Esther. Esther. It's a Esther. Jewish name. Yeah, well, they all are. 
you know, I mean, every name is from the Bible. True. It's, come on. That's where I got my name. <laughs> Except for uh, Keisha Marie, you know, I mean, we make up some <laughs> names in, in my mm -hmm. neighborhood. But, uh, uh, you know, when you have a, a, a partner like this over here, how do you, how do you get around him? I, uh, I don't she know. runs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Takes about 15 minutes. <laughs> Esther, are you, where, what, what origin are you? What part of Asia? Um, Korean. See, now, we just had Gary Shapiro here. He's Korean? No. <laughs> he is. He is by design. <laughs> oh, okay. Because Gary is the chairman of the Consumer Electronics Association, as you probably heard. And they have the Consumer Electronics Show, which has all of these products, mm -hmm. which are made in Korea. And, and the Koreans are outperforming, not because of tsunami, but they're outperforming the Japanese. They've been doing it for a couple of years. And as a matter of fact, to be frank about it, the Chinese have jumped into the game in the last year or so especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they are making uh, great strides. But they're not going after the Japanese who have Sony and Panasonic. They're going directly to the Koreans because Wait, the Koreans so. have, the, have the corner on the market now. I didn't, we didn't talk about that when Gary was here, but I wanted to mention that. So are, are you South Korean or North Korean? Um, what do you think? South. They don't let North Koreans out. Oh, they don't let, I know, that's yeah. true. But when I get violent on stage, I tell people I'm North Korean. Really? But they yeah. duck. <laughs> well, they do let North Koreans out. They, they become manicurists. <laughs> yeah. But she's, the, she's a funny South Korean, though. A black belt manicurist, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, you, you're working together for what reason? Is there a cultural well, exchange? Well, you see, it's kind of. The, the Actors Temple, which is a, a temple for everybody, but they let actors in back in 1924, you right. know. Um, they, need, uh, they need money, you know, like every church needs a little money to fix things up and everything. It's a, it's a monument. Gosh, it's uh, since 1924 they've been open. And uh, we do a, every year we do a benefit. The Dave Koenig's on it. And well, you're Ross a friar, Bennett. though, right? I'm a friar. It's, it's an all friar cast. Nice. She's yeah. a friar, I'm a friar. Well, why don't you guys just go worship at the friars? What the hell are you doing over at the temple? Well, the, the, the <laughs> temple is Hamish. It's a real temple. Oh, Sophie, so it's not Sophie Jewish. It's yeah. the only way I can get in. Yes, it's kind of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fundamentalist Jewish. They don't let Jewish. my kind in otherwise. Oh. Well, well the, the rabbi is a female, but it's, it's like orthodox, but it's got, you know, those kind of leanings. They're very open to, to everybody, you know, so. Yeah. And they, look, they let actors in, so. You know. It sounds like Jonestown. You guys got Kool-Aid? No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's Sophie Tucker's temple for corn's sake. Yeah, you know, know. What so is it? It's an old show business tradition. It's an old, yeah, and, and uh, the memorials on the wall is uh, Smith and Dale side by side and uh, oh, Al Kelly and uh, George Burns and Jack Bob, Benny. what do you think you're sitting here talking to Joe Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be there. He'll this be there. Young, of course he will. He's still there. Sipping his Hoffman bets. That's, yes. right. That's right. <laughs> you, should, you, should, you and Joe should do an act together like Weber and Fields I or have. something. I, you know, I hosted the Dr. broadcast. Cronkite. I hosted the broadcast Pioneer Club, and he's very funny. He's, he is a funny man, really Joe is, Franklin. No, I mean seriously, he's, yes, he's, he's a funny he, guy. You yeah. would not expect that he does material that way because he's known for being a host, like I am. But he's very good. He's a terrific guy. He's a very I, funny I, I man. absolutely respect the heck out of him. I always make it fun of him. But you know, uh, the fact of the matter is that mm -hmm. when he sees me, he says, "Thank you for bringing me up." Wow. Oh. And, uh, and he says, you know, I know you, that I used to listen to you when I was a kid, Joe tells me. <laughs> <laughs> On his crystal set. So, Esther, when did you begin your great career in comedy? Uh, about seven years ago, yeah. yeah. I started as an MC of my talent show in eighth grade. And oh, that's cool. In grade school, yeah, and the librarian was like, you're funny, you should come up there and host the show, so... What have you been talking about? Here tell I am. us some of the stuff that you've been telling the public here. So uh, telling the public, I talk about my my love life, which I can't really discuss. I here. want to hear it. <laughs> How dirty can she? That be? I want to hear. It. No, don't get <laughs> it. Your love life was dirty. You're the PG well, rated. I don't know. You know, I I, go, I do a lot of shows at comedy clubs, and you know, guys will come up to me after a show and be like, you know, can I make love to you? And I'm like, well, I don't really know you, you know. And he's like, what do you need to know? I was like, your medical history? And he's like, I'm allergic to penicillin. Now can we do it? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, these are the things I got to deal with, uh, you know, being out every night. But Bob yeah. is a wonderful syndicator uh, of, of uh, those great teams. Yes, well, you know, we discussed my audition last time for the Farrelly Brothers Three Stooges movie, yeah. and I did have a call back. I showed up at the callback. I'm the only one called back. I was the only one called back for the three students thing. And I, they should just give me the part, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had these notes from the director. The director wasn't there. Curly wasn't always a 10. 
Sometimes he was a, a four or a six. Maybe when he was sick. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, know, but the end, so yeah. we had to like, you know, so it was like, no, no, sort of a more mellow, mo, a little lower. Yeah. Let's you hear know, a little yeah. of it. Do a little of so, it. I'll do Curly on the Titanic, all right? right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> curly on Titanic. <laughs> out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. <laughs> Oh, look, an icicle. <laughs> the icicle. Where's your popsicle? <laughs> oh, there's the moon. There's the stars. There's an ice bike. An ice bike. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so I'm still waiting to hear from the Farrelly brothers. Really? I don't know why they just don't give me the part. Well, well they're not they're giving anybody the part. No, I think. Uh, who knows what's happening? They offered Cher a part. What are they going to do with Cher? And. Um, Johnny Knoxville, I think, from Moby. Terrible. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But Bob Greenberg for Curly, I think, would be wonderful. And I'll, I'll play a sick Curly. Maybe, maybe Curly's going to be like a six or a four because they're going to have like those serious moments because it's a feature. Maybe Curly's going to walk around going, why does Mo hit me all the time? Hmm. Larry should support me. Maybe he has issues. You know, the, more, the, the <laughs> undercurrent. The undercurrent. You well, know, the real one. Curly would, would, would do these things around uh, on the floor right. because he forgot the lines. Yes, the, 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 the woo woos. Well, and, the, the no, Three no. Stooges are for guys, though. The women I don't, don't like that. I've met some. No, I some, love the Three Stooges. Some but women. You're different. She's, <laughs> she's Korean. They, 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 they're usually fairly ugly women that like the Three Stooges. <laughs> but, but I she's, used to be ugly. So, but, uh, you know, she doesn't fall in the profile. But uh, No, I have three brothers. That's why. We uh, all watch the Three that's Stooges. Why. Yeah. You know? So Whoopi Goldberg loved the Three Stooges. There's a lot of violence in the Three Stooges. Yes. You know, they, they certainly have uh, but decided. It's gentle you know, violence. I don't mean they pick up a brick and hit you. Ah! 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 <laughs> Backfighter. <laughs> You're the column fiver. I love, arr, arr, arr. I, I love Shemp. <laughs> oh, Shemp was good. Shemp, see, the thing about Shemp was he could go into other films. Yeah. Shemp was, he was, he was, you know, disgusting. But, you know, he, you could put him as a sidekick in a Damon Runyon picture or something because he could kind of fit in as a character actor. Curly was always in his Curly. own world. What about you know? Larry? Larry? Larry actually could have been a very, he was a very good actor, Larry actually. Larry Feinberg, right? Yeah. And a very yeah. good mus musician. Yeah, yes, good yes. Uh, you know, yeah. who was the one that said, if I knew you was coming, I'd have baked a cake. Leave him alone. He was great just standing around going, oh. Like so what was something. Joe? Joe came later. There was, Larry there was and Joe. There was four of them. Well, there was okay. There was really it started out as Mo, Larry, and Shemp. Right. Right. Shemp got his own career going. Younger his brother Curly, because Mo, Shemp, and Curly were all brothers. Mm -hmm. Replaces. He becomes the big sensation of the right. Stooges. Curly does. Mm -hmm. Curly gets sick. That's the six. Uh, Stop it! You know he gets a little sick. Gets out of the act. Shemp goes back in. But then Shemp dies, right? So they get Joe Bessie, you know, ooh, you're crazy. You played Stinky oh, yeah. on, oh, yeah. uh, ooh, not so hard. It you didn't know, work. definitely it was it a didn't gay work. Yeah. A bit too gay. It was Mo Larry and a gay gentleman. That's yeah, what right. it was, you know. <laughs> so, um, and then they, Joe Dorita. Then, now, Curly Joe Dorita, I actually like him because he doesn't get in the way like Joe Bessa did. Right. He kind of fills that void, but he was more for like, the older Mo and Larry who were like, they couldn't poke so fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, the slaps were a little, it was like sort of a, uh, crack. You know, wasn't it? You know, you know. that might be a funny thing is to do the senior three students. I know. <laughs> I'm more to you. Have you. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you? I can't hear. I can't see. I can't walk. My bladder's full. <laughs> Somebody have to be bladder. <laughs> Where's my medication? <laughs> Where's my medication? So uh, what, when are IV, you IV. <laughs> when, when are you guys at the uh, at the Actors Temple now? Monday night. Monday night. Right. March 28th. What, what time? 7 p.m. That's great. They can look it up also at uh, www.theactorstemple.org. Well, just give the oh. site here. <laughs> the, 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 the W is theactorstemple.org, right? Yeah. Yeah. And That's it's good. called what? What's the, the event called? It's the Actors Temple Comedy Benefit. Thing. Okay. All I, star I, cast. Take it easy. You know, I mean. Corey Kahaney, Ross Bennett, oh, Jews, okay. Gentiles, <laughs> Esther Kuhl. Mostly Jews. <laughs> Mostly Jews. <laughs> Let's be honest. You know, if I, if I remarry and I have a child, mm -hmm. I'm going to call him Shemp. Shemp, that yeah, would be I good. I think that's a great name. And Shemp Reynolds. And his first words Shemp. would be, Hee -hee 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 -hee. <laughs> That's the best thing about Shemp is when they slept, because they'd be like, Mo would be like, That was the best thing about Shemp was the sleeping. Hold on for a minute. Tom Robbins is coming out here. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>
the Gillette, the new Gillette shaver. What is it called? Mach 3 Power. This is our little experiment. Do you know what that does? Yeah. Um, you use it to shave. You have no idea. Oh, I think it vibrates or something. It, rub your hand across my face. I'll come back later. <laughs> All right. I'm excited about the new shaver. Laser, uh, vibrator. This is a great commercial. This shows you how to open. Uh, it did open easily. See, you just have to know how. This is Gillette M3. See, it has a battery inside of it, which lasts forever. And it vibrates while you shave, which means that it also is a shaver and a razor. Oh, isn't this great? Look at this. But this thing works better than any shaver razor in the world. Gillette M3. My shave. Would you buy a car from a guy who wears a shirt like this? In, uh, in photography, this is called a rim shot. <laughs> so, John, you, did you buy an Escalade? Uh, my family did. I want to get your family, John. Yeah, so, your Very sister. Well. My son. What's your favorite car? Escalade. Why? Because you didn't buy one. And my husband and myself are purchasing this one. My mother left me a cigar box of my father's <laughs> ashes. So what about my car? Tell me about it. What's the, what's the SCS have? And that's a Bluetooth. What's the Bluetooth? Hands-free phone. Well, if the phones are so good, why do they make cameras out of them? I like those. Cool. That's cool. I like that. Car. You know why I have this? Why? Because it goes with the SCS. It oh, has Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Like I got right now. It's a beauty. Nobody has the features like us. Voice recognition, navigation, heated and cooled seats. Heated steering wheel. We have it all. You can join our easy layaway plan. <laughs> I thought you were going to. Are we up... done? No, we're not done. <laughs> the guy who sold you this car is a Wheeler dealer. Cadillac. Breakthrough. Larry Shemp and Gaddafi. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got uh, Todd Robbins here, and Todd is a creator and star of Play Dead. Now, Play Dead is a show that's off Broadway, and it was written by Pen of Pen and Teller or Teller of Pen and Teller, one of the two, the guy that doesn't talk, but he writes pretty well. Here's Todd Robbins. <laughs> Hello, Todd. How are you, Joey? Good, Good to audience. see you. No, don't walk too fast. Oh, don't worry. You got to play dead. Uh, yeah, I got nowhere to go and plenty of time to get there. <laughs> Good to Good see you. Good to see you in a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last time I saw you, there was a circus underneath you. Well, yeah, <laughs> but that's that's my life, just in general. Sideshows. Yeah, sideshows, all kinds of sideshows. Coney Island. Magic Coney Island. Reynolds, believe it or not. Exactly. And, uh, you know, my namesake is right on that banner it's, over there. It's true. Believe it, you're nuts. That that's was actually, true. believe it or well, not, I, you get sued by Ripley's. But I don't was, like to say that. I understand. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> All right, so now you got a show that I've seen, which yeah. I thought was great. You come out in a white suit, and mm -hmm. you. Uh, By the end of it, it's not white. The anymore. most amazing thing, I, I don't want to give any of the show away because then, you know, it kind of spoils the fun, mm -hmm. but you're completely in the dark in this show. Yeah. And it's a very. Nobody ever has that of any time I've ever seen anything on or off Broadway except when there was a blackout. Yeah. But you create a blackout. Yes. And magic things happen. All of a sudden, there are a lot of little gags, surprises, yes. and things that you don't want. Well, it depends upon what you want, I mean. Well, I don't want to hear about people who, who are here to haunt me, who died, and, and they come back and they want their pound of flesh. Well. It's a little of that. Yeah, I know you, you have a number of ghosts haunting you, uh, Joey, through the years, but, uh, yes. <laughs> but for the most part, it's spooky amusement. It's, it's fun. It's haunted fun. It's the... It's the, you're never, as I say in the show, you're never so alive as when you're scared to death. Yeah. And that's really what the show is all about. It's true uh, ghost stories about real people. And as I tell them, you get a sense that they're gone, but they're not well, far because away. Because you act them out with, yeah. other, with us in the audience yeah. sometimes. And I don't, I don't know, what, how, how would you explain what you're doing to, uh, I mean, you, you have to do it, you're on the air right now. Yeah. But uh, you, you have, I've seen you do a lot of different things, sure. and you, you are a magician, mm -hmm. and you're also, uh, I would say, a sword swallower. I would say that, I've too. I've seen you eat things that people uh, would say are inedible. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've got... 
in the show. I, I do that very thing. I, I uh, eat a bulb. We, yeah, we start the. Uh, uh, I'm gonna just turn this on because the fact is, if you don't turn this on for a moment, people don't will think that this is is got to be. It's got to be a trick. But this is. It's a real light bulb. Yeah. And it's an amazing ability that uh, even if I do say so myself, I learned it from an old guy who did inside shows. And there's no trick to this whatsoever. And that's the great thing about it is that so much of what we do in Play Dead is is illusion, is deception. I mean, my co-creator is Teller of Penn and & Teller. And, uh, and he also directed the show. And we wanted to include one thing sort of uh, from my background in the side show that would get people talking. And uh, it's basically taking a light bulb like this and we're, we're doing this. Oh, oh my. my god. Mm, we'll probably put a camera on this, guys, if you want to pay attention to what we're doing. <laughs> I know you're busy. <laughs> we're, we're, um, yeah, you know. And it's okay. a light snack. Yeah, people, <laughs> people think that it's got to be uh, candy or sugar, but this is the real thing. The glass is real. It's an old skill pattern, and I've eaten more than 4,000 light bulbs during the course of my career, if you want to call it a career. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I like the pinky up. That's yeah, really right. 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 I mean, dignity. It's, it's all about dignity. I mean, they've they got to be a class actor. You're going to be on the yes. Jerry Reynolds show. What's really going on here? Certainly. It's like that. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this will keep you in the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, some people, they think, you know, you would like some salt with that, but that stuff will kill you. <laughs> Now, I hope that's a GE bulb. It, it you know, is. They own NBC. I know. And GE be. bulbs now, are the best bulbs, here, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, GE stands for good eating. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the funny thing about it. Years ago, I was doing a talk show on the, on the Food Network, and, <laughs> and um, I'm doing the light bulb. And I do, the, I do that line about, you know, GE stands for good eating, and I get a call the next day from Fairfield, Connecticut, from the office. Right. Of GE, and I thought it was going to be a cease and desist. Instead, it was an invitation to come up and perform for the brass up there and eat a light bulb for them. So I am the unofficial glass eater of the General Electric Corporation. Well, it's wonderful, and you know, I, I suppose that you were raised in Watts. <laughs> 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 These electrical jokes are revolting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I used to do in Denver? I had a television show there, and I used to take the G it was GE on the station, mm -hmm. KOA Radio and Television. And I was on every night, and I would have guests. Sometimes uh, I would oh. go to the closet and mm -hmm. give them a bulb, yeah. a 250 water, big big floodlights if they were really terrific. But I gave Joyce Brothers a night light, <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't know what the significance of it was. Now, what what did you just eat? Do you know what you yeah, just that eat? was? A, that was a 60 watt bulb. I usually eat 100 watt bulbs, but I'm on a diet. <laughs> 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 now, it's so rude because I, I didn't bring anything for anyone else. Yeah. But does incandescent taste the same as fluorescent? Um, there's a big difference. I'm, I'm being put out of business, basically, because the incandescent bulb is the only one I can do. I the, know. I just wonder if you've gone green. Yeah. No, hell no. But you will in a minute um, if you keep well, eating that. Exactly. Yeah. You know and what? I don't eat the metal part because I have to fly to Las Vegas. And, <laughs> and, and if, I, would, if, I, if you were working security at Newark yeah. Airport, would you believe my story <laughs> when I set off the metal detector? No. Yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's rather crunchy, you know. I mean, it's. It, oh, yeah. It's a nice I, outlet. You want to talk rough? I, 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 I got the rough with right here. <laughs> but this is just one thing. The play that is not just all about a guy eating glass. No. Would you like something to wash that down? Yeah. You know, like yeah, a little actually, arsenic? This, this is the most dangerous part of the whole stunt because all this broken glass would be washed down with New York City water. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, we have the best water it's in the country. Water. Sure, and we the worst know. bulbs. <laughs> yeah. uh, pipes are filthy, though, Joe. I mean, the water is good. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, mm, mm. All right. Well. <laughs> I once had a meal with Todd after a, a show, and uh, he's yeah. on a very spe special diet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pathetic plea for attention, but it gets it. <laughs> now, is there any spillage uh, usually uh, in your gut after you've swallowed the bulb? Do mm -hmm. you like that? I mean, you. There are things I do every day. It keeps the glass moving through my system. There's a diet regimen I go through every day, and, and there are things I do before I do this. And afterwards, and it all kind of goes through. And How did you learn this? Um, I was in a, uh, I was in a cheap motel one time, <laughs> traveling around, and there was a very thin wall, and uh, 
I don't know if I can tell the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a bomb charge? And, I, and I, heard, I heard the... I heard the uh, well, how much uh, did she charge? Well, no, I heard the guy in the next room say, uh, Honey, if you turn out that light, I'll eat it. I went, that's a good... I have a good start. I have to learn how to do it. Just, I learned it from an old sideshow guy. I, I was growing up in Southern California, and I learned all the old sideshow things. And I got to know magicians and, and spirit mediums and all kinds of stuff. And I loved all this stuff. And I just learned this all, and that's what part... You know, this show is just like a little, a little tip of the iceberg of, of uh, all the weird things yeah, I do. When you were a kid, you, to get attention, you put a lampshade on your head. Now you just eat the ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a progression, not much of one, but it is but a progression. Stay a drunk. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to be doing drugs and being a drug, a drunk, and testing this out. No, there is no flail factor to these kind of things. You have to no. know what you're doing, or you end up dying. Yeah. So I don't want. Don't, don't, try don't this do at home. this at home. Right. It's basically yes. what I'm saying. Don't yeah. try this at home. Um, uh, I know it, what I'm doing. I don't even know though you're I'm a member of the it. union, you, the, you don't want residual effects. No, no, no. no. Uh, it's, it's a lighting union. That's the thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the show that you're doing, the yeah. Play Dead show, mm -hmm. is that is that Penn and Teller or, or Teller was, or Penn? Which one was it? It was Teller, the the smaller, quieter half. Yeah. And <laughs> he does talk, and when he talks, you listen. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great show, Thank Todd. You. I mean, really, you do a great job, and it's very entertaining. I was surprised and amazed, yeah. and it's uh, not because of your talent, because you have that. But I, I, I think finally you have something that everybody really will be impressed with and give you an award for. Well, thank you, Joe. Here, let me give you some money here. Let me give you some money, Joe. No, I, it really, it is. It's wonderful. I, you, well, it's like no other show you've ever seen. That's right. I, and and I'm not saying it's not like any other show you've ever seen, but it's not like any other show you've ever seen because it's a combination of a lot of different things. Seance, the old midnight spook shows with spooky magic and the lights going out and all things swirling around. And ghost stories, campfire ghost stories. And Blue Man Group. Yeah, and it's got a lot of audience participation yeah. in it, whether they want to right. or come. And we kill a guy in every show. Yeah. I know, and I was not volunteering. No, <laughs> no, you weren't. But you were wondering where that guy's apartment was, because you were thinking about moving again. I was thinking about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, coming up is Giada Valenti. You know, she's going to sing right. for us tonight. And Todd, Beautiful. do you be see, seeing Todd? Now, where is the theater again? This it's is the Players a Theater uh, on McDougal Street. The, the website is uh, playdeadnyc.com. Tickets at Ticketmaster. We play Tuesday through Sunday, and uh, we've been going strong since November. And uh, it's, a, it's come fun and have fun with me. Be locked into a theater with me, and I will scare the shellac out of you. <laughs> fun for the whole family, too. Yeah. Yeah. Todd, you've been doing this for a while now. I mean, yes. this is, this is a, a holdover show. Yeah, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're going strong. And now they're, they're talking. We're trying to figure out how we're going to do this. It looks like we're going to do a national tour and, uh, right. and take it to the West End in London. The production's going to be up, open there. They're talking about Alan Rickman playing me. So that's oh, going to be kind of fun. No. Well, but only if you'll eat a light bulb. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> please, 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 yeah. Well, you, you do a lot of other things, too, and it's yeah. great. It's when you terrific. go to the bathroom, does it glow in the dark? Hey. Oh. Well, <laughs> I, I have no porcelain left on my toilet bowl. Let's uh. put it that way. It's going to be sandblasted away there. Where, well, thank you for eating thank a GE ball. My pleasure. My <laughs> pleasure. Always good to see you. Sylvania is bad taste. Oh, please. All right, we'll be right back with you out of Atlantic. I was killed on McDougal Street. <laughs> and the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over five million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-440-2181. 1-800-440-2181. 
Nassau Ready Mix is located in Inwood, New York, near JFK Airport, as well as on the North Shore waterfront of Glen Cove, New York. We pride ourselves on supplying the finest quality of Ready Mix concrete and stone products. Our additional services include recycling, dumping, barge access, and tractor trailer transportation. So, whether you're a residence, business, or government agency, Nassau Ready Mix looks forward to providing competitive pricing on your next job. Our goal is not to simply meet our customers' expectations, but to exceed them every time. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. If you've seen Todd Robbins before, he does a lot of tricks and magic, and he's been around the boardwalk, and he's, he's just a terrific guy. But this particular show, I, I want to uh, endorse it as a performance because it's well-crafted and well-written. And I, I like Todd no matter what he does anyway because he's fun and he's, and he's a great personality. But this particular show is a show. It's a show. I mean, he, he does a whole performance with a lot of things that, uh, that they thought would be um, a Broadway production, you know, that kind of thing, without music. Yeah. But he uses some of that, too. I mean, it's, 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 it's really good. I want to I wanna make that clear, because I think Appreciate sometimes, that. you know, you can't, you can't put in an ad something that you really want to express that's, that's different or more. And, I, and I'm using words, because, I, I, you know, the art of, of conversation has been lost with sound bites. Yeah. And, yeah. and we, we're too quick. We're too quick to judge each other. We're too quick to drop phone calls. I mean, so is AT&T. <laughs> you know, but we're, 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 we don't really get into it too much. And I want, and, and we're friends, you know, and yeah. I always like you anyway. Mm -hmm. And everything you do is pretty, you know, I mean, you're, you're crafted. But this particular thing is a performance. And as I said to Jay before he left the set here a couple minutes ago, I said, bring your wife, because yeah. you'll really enjoy it. It's an evening out to see something as, as it's a surprise, too. That's why we're not... I'm, I'm it, it's, it's hard to talk about the show without talking about the show. Yeah, and then you give it away. Much. You give it away. And, and I, even at the end of the show, say, asking people to uh, kind of save our, our secrets and surprises for others. And th th we've been very fortunate that people haven't... They, they've said nice things about it. We're the number one uh, rated show and customer... Uh, Satisfaction, Satisfaction on, yeah. on Ticketmaster. Yeah. And this is, you know, even they, they deal with Madison Square Garden and the rock concerts and things like that. And our little show down at the Players Theater uh, has got a better rating than any, uh, any show going. Oh, there is a bad thing. thing. It, it, except, of course, Spider-Man, which is the greatest There's a show bad ever. thing about your show. I like Spider-Man. I yeah. thought it was terrific. I like the production. I think yeah. it's the wrong music because it's, it's serious music about a comic book. Yeah. The same thing happened with Dance of the Vampires. They had a serious show uh, idea with uh, Michael Crawford because yeah. he was a fan of the opera, but it was goofy. You know, you don't sing garlic, garlic, and have him come out and try to be a matinee idol. Yeah. It just it, it it gives you two it signals. Didn't, it didn't, didn't make much what, together. Uh, your show, the hard part about your show actually was finding the theater because yeah. I wanted to go to that uh, Cherry Lane or whatever. Yeah, or the Middle Lane, around the corner, yeah. I couldn't find a theater. Yeah, it's a great little theater. It's a you know 250 seat theater that uh, has been sort of underutilized. Yeah. We're the first uh, open ended run that's been in there in in a I think a decade or more, and it's great because it's right there on McDougal Street, in the heart of the the whole thing between Bleecker and West Third, and with all the bars and restaurants. And, and right at the end of the block is the bitter end. Yeah, but yeah. I think your place is the bitter end after uh, the death. Well. <laughs> well the, you know, Cafe Wa is in our basement, right. where we're... Right. Uh, Which Jimmy used Hendrix to be a them. great rock and roll place. Yeah, and then they still have a great house band, and people have a they line up around the block to get and in that there. was pre-drugs. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. All right, now, uh, now Giada Valenti is coming out here, and Giada's a beautiful young lady who's Italian. She's from Venice, so she knows how to swim. This is good. Uh, so here she is. Here's Giada. Giada, are you hiding back there? Where is she? you got to bring her in. Giada, Come on, Giada. Giada, right? Giada? Giada, 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 Giada,
<laughs> got a beautiful young hey. lady. Hi, sweetheart. How, how are you? I forgot. I got a kiss. Nice to see you. Todd nice Robbins. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice Esther, to meet you. Esther Q. And of nice course, Bob Greenberg. Nice to see Greenberg. you again. Come on, Giada, sit over here, please. Oh, we're sitting together. It's wonderful yes. to have you. Oh, I'm your sidekick. Uh, you can kick me if you like. Ow! <laughs> I, think I, I think I ran into you outside a little earlier. Yes, we had a lot of fun. You had no makeup. Yes, I but had no makeup. But you look the same. You don't need makeup. Oh, well, I, we all need. You, 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 you need makeup yourself. This well, is I television. Well, I need all the help I can get. That's different. <laughs> me but too. You know, you, you uh, are, we all do. Most you of are, uh, Most actually, Oh, grazie. No, we all do. You actually have come from uh, a long line of people like Sophia Lauren, who are... I wish. Gina Lola Brigida. <laughs> And, Gina Lolo Brigida, and, sure, and I know. Magnani. Great actress. Yes. She did not have the look of Sophia Loren, but she was a great actress. Very internal. Very oh, internal. Yes. Yes. one was, of the best it was actresses. A, it, was, it was an inside job. Now, why have you never taken to the movies and done acting? I mean, I, uh, you're singing I've great. been so busy being a songwriter and a singer. I'm new in this country. I just moved six years ago. And you know when you move to another country, you have to start from scratch from the beginning yeah. so I've been working on my music and but you uh, live here in Manhattan so you have a lot yes. of, you have a lot of scratch I know a lot of scratch and, I, and a lot of friends you know that yes. works in the music in the in the business of uh, movies but I never maybe one day why not well you know you 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 I go to the etc club and see you perform uh, yes. you've been there a number of times now and thank I, you for I've that. been there a few times yes uh, the he's Christmas always show I saw yeah. which was too bad it was in August no, it, the Christmas <laughs> show was for Christmas. <laughs> and it was, it was beautiful. I had uh, taken my friend uh, Bob Gilligan, yes, was who was very here. Nice. So Bob's uncle is Hugo Winterhalter, who used to produce Perry Como. Oh, famous. my favorite singer. Yeah, you know and, that. And you made some comment uh, during the show that uh, of all the Italian singers, the least known in Italy yes. was Perry Como. Yes. Wow. Nobody knew who he was. No. I found out about Perry Como when I moved to New York City six years ago. There I was, Andrea Bocelli had just released It's Impossible. And I said, this is a pretty song. So I went on YouTube, and then suddenly I found uh, It's Impossible sang by Perry Como. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a second, he's Italian like me. I, and I went through all the video of Perry Como, and I fell in love with Perry Como. It's mm -hmm. my favorite favorite. It's very lazy singer, as I recall. Wasn't yeah. Perry Como like, always like, I love uh, you. He was very, like, very I think very he was lazy. a real gentleman, just uh, like you, Joy. Oh, well, thank you for saying <laughs> that. He, he was also uh, uh, a very, very, he was the first person to introduce colored television. Mm -hmm. oh, really? It was on NBC. NBC invented television, RCA did. Wow. And uh, Perry Como was their guy who showed you color TV. There were two systems. One was CBS, which was a wheel, a flywheel that had colors on it with little gels like they use in the theater. Wow. Uh, and it was, it was kind of yutsy. But the RCA one was called Compatible Color, where they actually had true green and true red, and, and the combination worked with tubes I in the earlier know. days. Now, now we don't use any of that. But, but you know, Perry Como was the guy they used for. Wow. He had yellow jaundice and rosacea, <laughs> so he looked very good in You're color. You're destroying an idol, <laughs> no, because I'm, I totally uh, love I'm Perry Como. I'm a comedian. I'm a jester. Oh, a, El my. Jester. <laughs> Stanley O and Alio. I don't know. Uh, I don't have to believe what you're saying. Okay, you don't Just have to. to. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, okay, you're too funny. El Roberto Benidio. <laughs> He's great. He's wonderful. I love He's him. Now, uh, when I first met Giada, it was with Sonny Grasso. We were over yes. at Rails. And, uh, and Sonny has a table there, you know, and, and he introduced yeah. me to, to Giada. And I said, you know, Sonny, of course, produced a lot of films. Yeah. And I thought, wow, here's another movie star. Mm. And nope. then I heard her sing. And it threw me, it threw oh, my back up. Oh, it, it was wonderful. Uh, at, uh, I guess it was five or six years ago, something six like that. Six years yeah. ago. I mean, I came here six years ago and I met Sonny maybe three months. I was uh, in New York City for three months and I, I was asked to perform at an Italian-American event. Yeah. Actually, the night that they closed the Plaza Hotel was the night before, the Saturday, and there was this big event and I performed. And I remember maybe two days before, a friend of mine, a singer too, she said, you have to get to know this man, Sonny Grosso. It's very uh, famous, prestigious. prestigious. prestigious yeah. And so I saw pictures of Sonny and there I was three days after oh. and I was singing and then was Sonny Grosso. So he came to me after I performed and I said, I remember, I said to him, you're Mr. Sonny Grosso. He turned back and he said, Chrissy, she knows my name. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so, I mean. Well, you know, uh, there was a place friends. where you used to perform that is an opera house. Yes, the, the Di Capo Theater. Di Capo. Very oh. beautiful theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, New York is, is a, a city. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, if you don't ever leave the couch, you wouldn't know this, but it's a city of little pockets. Yes. yes. Sure. And one of them is this opera place that has, in your case, you sang pop music. Yeah. And, a, and an orchestra. Yeah. And it's, it's a, a theater that's in the basement of a... Of a church. A church. I, I did Shakespeare there. They, did, they used to have oh, Shakespeare nice. there. Yeah, I did uh, it's Mary Wives. It's a beautiful theater. Yeah, Mary Wives of Windsor. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and it's, it's just yeah. a, a, a In the a 70s on the east side, right? Yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. another place, like Todd's, uh, Todd Robbins' place. You can't find it. You have to know it's yeah. there. The Copo you know, Theater, that's right. People... That's kept secret. Sorry about that. His spirits are angry. It, did the ball pass? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> what did you guys do with it? Like? He ate the ball. Uh, he ate, he ate a ball. He ate it. Really? You weren't yeah, watching the yeah. show. Can yeah. Roberto Benini eat a ball? No, no. The, no. Probably, if you ask him, he will. I heard Marcello <laughs> Mastriani used to eat balls. I don't know the Spanish. Oh, now, yeah. now, you know, we, we want to, before you perform oh, here tonight, you're going to sing for us, right? Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, we should mention a little bit about uh, Pavarotti. Luciano. Too. Yeah. Now, there was a... a he had a pop style in addition to his opera yeah. greatness. At, at, at the end of his career, more or less, the last 10 years of his career, he started to organize the Pavarotti and Friends, and actually he was collecting around himself a pop singer, a very popular pop singer like Sting mm -hmm. and many mm -hmm. other. And he was do, and Bo Andrea yeah. Bocelli, of yeah. course. And he was doing this uh, benefit concert, the Pavarotti and Friends. So he was keep singing operatic, uh, in an operatic way, but he had a passion for, for pop music too. Have you seen the three kids yes. who are doing the, uh, uh, the tenors, the three kids on, the, on YouTube? There are three ch young children from Italy who are doing just as Pavarotti did. With, I guess uh, that the three kids, they're produced by Tony Rennes? I don't those know, three guys? I don't know, but I, I, it's, it's quite, it's, yes. it's, it's incredible, you know, I mean, I, there's a lot of talent in this world that doesn't yes. get exposed, which no. is one of the reasons I love doing this show, because Thank this is job. not American Idol or Italian Idol in your case. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're <laughs> we're trying to put things together yeah. that that are not, not that, usually yeah. there, and you know, surprisingly, people will go to YouTube and they'll get goofy oh, yeah. about anything. Yeah. And, and yet, you know, they'll they'll have a, a singing dog. But, a dancing but, dog. I saw a dancing dog. I, I want to put things that are quality on the air, and you're one of them. And I'm so oh, happy thanks. you're here tonight. And people are going to it's discover you on television. We've had you on radio a number of times, but I want people to see, first of all, on hey, radio. We have people yeah, fans already. You already have fans there back there. there. Yeah. I think they are seeing themselves on TV, and they are saying oh, a lot no, to no, themselves. No, no, they don't see themselves yet. Not till ah, we they don't see themselves the yet? Oh, okay. Bella Donna. Though. Yeah, they are for us. What are they but doing having, over there? having your, your uh, looks, which you know you have, Mm -hmm. And you. also uh, your acting ability. <laughs> I think I'm hitting on you. No, no. Like I think, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we are like best friends, me and you. I know, you know, but you know, JJ's staring at me funny now. Exactly. He's no, looking he's like looking I'm trying you. to get into your wallet, <laughs> which is not true. <laughs> it's showbiz. It's true. Yeah, right. And the, I'll tell you, the word show comes first. <laughs> it's more, yeah. It, it's uh, show jungle. So I want I want to have you uh, sing here and show everybody my how, how wonderful you are. And do we have somebody to play, or are you going to do some tracks? I no, I don't have my musicians with me tonight, so I play a song from my CD, and I love you so. But You're actually, gonna sing live, though. I'm going to sing live for you. Yeah. And I want to say that it's a song that everybody knows. And that's a Perry Como song. No, it's not a Perry Como and song. And I love you so. That is the title uh, of the CD. But I'm going to sing You Don't Have to Say You Love Me, which oh. is originally an Italian Dusty song. Dusty Springfield. Re right. No, it was written in Italy by a Venetian songwriter, oh. Dusty is Pino not an Italian. No, no, Dusty's not an Italian. Dusty, uh, the song was written and performed in 1965. Dusty Springfield was at the same festival where, in Italy, where this uh, wow. performer was performing. She loved the song, went back to England, sang it in English, and thanks to Dusty Springfield, the song became popular all, all right, over the world. Well, let's, let's take a little break here, and we'll okay. set you up over there on the stage, and, uh, right. and we'll have you do this Venetian this, song. Uh, this Venetian song. Venetia was right. blind. No, I wasn't. <laughs> you know, you're going for the obvious. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why should I do that? Well, it was a window of opportunity for the Venetian blind. So. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me shudder. <laughs> <laughs> it's curtains lot, for you. The red curtains. It'd be a lot better if you were Venetian deaf and dumb <laughs> and blind. No, we're gonna we're gonna play this uh, this little role tonight. You're gonna you're gonna really hear you're gonna hear a I'm real looking, Italian sing a real uh, Italian song. Can we song. invite people to my concert too? Yes. yes. When is it? It's gonna be this uh, Saturday, 
the 26th is uh, at near the et cetera club? at the et cetera club, okay. and it's a celebration of women. March is uh, the celebration yeah. of uh, the women. The et cetera club is on 46th Street. 44th 40, Street. 40, 40, 44th uh, between 8th and 9th. Ninth. Ninth. Upstairs right. from that Upstairs restaurant. Upstairs room, the piano room. They have a oh, beautiful yeah. little theater. Good and sound I'm, there, too. That's another place for good sound. Really? Yeah, I like it. I've, I've seen you there a few times. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little room. It's very cozy, and uh, I love the owner. is Italian like me, Daniele. So, and it's a nice place, and I get to perform there with my musicians. So everybody's invited, men and women, to celebrate us, women. Mm -hmm. since, uh, what's your name again? Esther Koo. Esther Koo. You Kuh. see? <laughs> Yeah. For me and you, dear, and for all, all right. the women out there, it's going to be a celebration of women, and, and it's going to be... And gentlemen can watch you the show. You are welcome, okay. dear. Thank You'll you. get welcome. <laughs> 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 hey, listen, I always say, you've never been to my show. It's a tribute to love, and I always say, you guys are impossible to live with or without, so we have to deal with you guys. So you have to be there. We love you. Yeah. You're all welcome. That's why next week she's working at a biker bar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna be back with Giada Valenti. Hold on for a minute. There we go. I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced it targets your entire core upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques, all in one circular motion as it aerobically burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy, and take just three minutes a day. And watch this. Simply remove the pin, and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat burning bun and thigh machine. On the Ab Circle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the Ab Circle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds. I feel great, and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the Ab Circle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, We'll send you Jennifer Nicoli's complete Lose Your Love Handle system, which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free. That's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab. You have nothing to lose but inches, so pick up the phone and call now. Call 1-800-709-1301 to try Absicle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your Absicle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. years of being married to uh, Carolyn, who uh, uh, I said to her 12 years ago, I said, you know, you don't have to say you love me, just pretend you do. And she did. She pretended for 12 years. Wow. <laughs> it's a long time to, to pretend. <laughs> and then I, I had to pay the alimony, right. and she stopped pretending. I put her picture on the checks up in the corner, and mailed them to her, and uh, I've been uh, uh, talking to uh, Todd Robbins here, and he's seanced my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. <laughs> who wants to who wants to take me with her, oh, wow. so that I can have peace. 
and and in the other plane where where Todd Robbins uh, breathes, you know, uh, I I'm able to uh, talk to my mother-in-law, get advice from her every night. That's nice. Whether you want it or not. Whether I want it or not, and she's she's not out of my life yet. Uh, no, no. Thanks, and she's I'm and I'm been invited to to say to her, you don't have to say you love me, just pretend you do. And it's, it's good. Pretending is good, you know. It's a nice fantasy. Yes, it keeps things going. Yes. Now, here's Giada Valenti, who is uh, going to sing that great song. <laughs> I hope you didn't have that kind of a marriage. <laughs> Noi soli come ogni sera, ma tu sei più triste e Dio lo so perché forse tu vuoi dire. Separarci al mondo potrà. When I said I needed you, you said you would always stay. It wasn't me who changed, but you and I. Just be closer than you don't have to stay forever. I will understand. Believe me, believe me. Oh, you don't have to say you love me. Just be closer than you. Side too. Yeah. We love you. You don't have to hand me the mic. Oh, sorry. This is my own. Now, Giada Valenti, who is appearing doing the women's songs yes. on Saturday night yes. over at the Etc. Club, which is on 44th Street. So everybody can come and see you and enjoy themselves. Take a date. It's like a date. It'd be nice to take a woman you love. It's a, a romantic, guy. it's a romantic concert, so just take some, someone you love. Can be your mother, yeah. your father, your husband, your, your wife, your dead mother your boyfriend, in your mother-in-law. You take can make her happy for months to come. I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you having a good time in New York? I mean, is I it, love uh, New York. Yeah? I'm going back to Italy next week for a month, but I've been here for a year and a half nonstop. Yeah. And uh, you know me. I have the time of my life here. I have so many friends like you that I call my American family. 
And so you now, have a rich husband, so... And I have a great husband. Yeah, I don't know about rich. He's from Amsterdam. He's he, rich of love. He, he runs four or five uh, <laughs> brothels there, and he has women. Yeah, tonight I'm even crying. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a it's a comedian too, Joe. You know, but I mean, I, I, I'm happy. I'm, uh, I have a good relation, a, a good husband, as you said, and yeah. tons of great friends that, that like you, they support well, me, they you. love me, and uh, yeah. Now, what what song are you going to sing for me on Saturday? I mean, there's got to be other. Do than you these. have one of my songs? It's going to be a celebration of women. So, do you have any song of uh, Ella Fitzgerald? Well, I like the me Fantastic. I like the medleys that you. I like the Edith Piaf because I know something about you. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm squealing here. You but mean. you grew up uh, with her influence. Yes. And and you were taught and trained when you lived overseas. Yes. And, and you were, I guess it was in France, huh? No, I was, I, I was born and raised in Venice, Italy, but uh, the woman who was living next to my grandmother, she was French. Yeah, Severine. she taught you all that. She, all she the told me French music. That's why as one of the five languages I speak is French. La Vie en Rose. La Vie en Rose is... Um, and, and, uh, and that uh, great hearty song that... Edith Piaf does. You know, yes. re no regrets. Uh, no rien de rien. Yeah. Yeah, that one. And I do all of them, Milor. But this particular concert that I will be doing Saturday, celebration of women. So I will be singing song of uh, El, El Mer what is her name? Helen Murray and Dusty Anne Spring Murray. and Murray. Yeah. Like you needed me. And uh, the Carpenters, you've been there, Carpenters. Yeah, I love the Carpenters. That's, you do yes. great. That you do I great. Adore, I mean, that's another I thing. I adore uh, Carpenters. Uh, the reason Carpenters. I'm saying it that way is because most people can't do Karen Carpenter justice. She's untouchable. Yeah. I, I, I sing the song because I love and I do it with respect. Do a little of it. Oh, you can no. do it without music. Just do one, one. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. See, that's isn't that great? That's that's really, she does that. Too. You do it. You do it. Yeah, great. with my musicians, we Are do you a nice. Are going to do that on Saturday? Yes, we're going to do a tribute okay. to, to to the Carpenters, of course, uh, and we're going to do also some Italian song. I'm Italian, so, yeah. and I'm going to do Mina and Ornella Vanoni, which are the two. Let's, let's say a deep piaf of Italy, right. and Mina was, in matter of fact, the favorite singer of Frank Sinatra. He wanted to take Mina to America to make her a big star. It's another one. 60. He wasn't a big star in Italy, was he? Frank no, Sinatra. it's known. It's known. Yeah. And he came to Italy and he heard the voice of Mina. She is one of the greatest voices we ever had. And he wanted to take it here, but she's scared to fly. So she said, thank you very much, Mr. Sinatra, but it's not going to happen. So it never happened. <laughs> it never happened. It he never said happened. he slept with Keely Smith. Really? That's I didn't know that. Story. Let's How about that it? One tonight. All right, so you know, at the Etcetera Club, you'll see Giada Valenti, who's uh, the former wife of, of our director, Joe Valenti. <laughs> and, 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 and you Is know. Is it really so? I did not know that. So, we have the same name, you know, it's true. You, know, you weren't married to him. Don't tell you, JJ. No, All sorry. right, so you got, you got to uh, come to the Etcetera Club where they break open a cannoli and a fortune pops out. And Actually, it's one of the best restaurants, Italian, Italian restaurants in New York City. I know, it's very good. It's very good. It's food, very, it's very good. Great. What does this mean when they do this? No me ne frega niente. I don't care. I, does that mean you don't care? You can do yes. that? Because they do that to yes. me all the time in Little Italy. Men uh, mean I don't care. Uh, yeah. It, it also can be a dirty, d d a bad word. Like well, the cab drivers do this to you. Or well, then you should answer like this. You should answer something. Like, Joy, I have to teach you something. We don't do that so much on television yet. But it's oh, coming. Well. It'll be Kathy Bates will be doing it on if her If you show want me to, uh, yeah, I can come once a week and teach you Italian through yeah, language. Maybe not movement. that sign language. We don't need that. <laughs> they are so good. That's my father. I should tell you, my father doesn't speak any kind of English of, uh, of any other language. But when he's in New York, he can go around and he can get his food and drinks. He just go, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, and he moves his hands, and everybody seems to understand What him. does this mean? Ah, uh, it that? means, mm, yeah, accidentally. No, it's, it, it's not, it's not, mm, it's like... Yeah. How yes. many of these things are good for you? He knows all these bad uh, sign language. You should learn the good one. I like, I love you. I don't know. Joy. <laughs> Sean David Morton is coming out in just a minute, and uh, he's going to be out here. I mean, he's, he came out years ago. But uh, here's Giada Valenti. <laughs> <laughs> be my pleasure. <laughs> Great. Love you. At the old soul. Forse tu vuoi dirmi che non sei.
Rams Auto Body, located on Liberty Avenue in Ozone Park, is a one-stop shop equipped with all the latest technologies to fix your car or truck right the first time. We work with all major insurance companies and specialize in collision, theft, and vandalism repair. Call any time to check your vehicle status. Speak with our dedicated and knowledgeable staff. We offer a 100% written guarantee on all repairs and a lifetime warranty on all paint repairs. BAMS Auto Body. We'll get your vehicle fixed, no matter what. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Nassau Ready Mix is located in Inwood, New York, near JFK Airport, as well as on the North Shore waterfront of Glen Cove, New York. We pride ourselves on supplying the finest quality of Ready Mix concrete and stone products. Our additional services include recycling, dumping, barge access, and tractor trailer transportation. So, whether you're a residence, business, or government agency, Nassau Ready Mix looks forward to providing competitive pricing on your next job. Our goal is not to simply meet our customers' expectations, but to exceed them every time. Since I'm not on the radio uh, on a regular basis all night anymore, you find that there's a lot of spooky stuff up there, you know, like uh, uh, the, the talk about Area 51. And Sean Morton is one of those guys who really is a good guest on the Art Bell show. And, and uh, I, I've had him on a few times, but he's, he's a favorite and was actually going to MC that show, I think, at one time. I think he was going to take it over when Art Bell resigned or when he quit the regular Monday through Friday broadcast. I think he's only on weekends now. So uh, uh, tonight we're going to bring Sean David Morton out and we'll talk about that. Here he is. Sean, where are you? He's not here yet. Okay. <laughs> he's somewhere in the other room. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's there. He's not all there anyway. It's fine. He'll be out in a moment. We'll have him out in a second. Anyway, so it's one of those nights where every once in a while you have uh, a, a little twinge, you know, and I, I got that from Giada Valenti because she's such a good singer and she has a warm personality and I, I love going to see her in person because she talks and does the songs, which a lot of people don't do. Sean, come on in here. Hey, buddy. That's all right. I was just killing time. And believe me, I've been doing it for years. I'm sorry about that. Bob Gilligan was in there talking with me back there. Yeah, you're going to blame it on somebody, huh? Yeah, indeed. Oh, how, how American. You know, tonight, tonight is kind of interesting because tonight actually marks the 33rd year anniversary when I was first on your show in Los Angeles, California on KMPC when I was a junior in college in Whoa. 1978. You believe that? Well, you know, KMPC was owned by Gene Autry. Yes. You know that, right? Yes. And uh, my daughter's name, because my family name is Pinto, right. I called her Kristen Michelle Pinto. Right. So it was KMPC. <laughs> really? Oh, that's... that's <laughs> of Calabasas. Yeah, that's where a we great lived way to, at that time. But that was a wonderful show you had there. And congratulations. We've been watching the show in the back. And you're, it's fantastic. This is exactly what, what NBC needs late night. And, and God bless you. I always told you that you were too cute for radio. Always. Well, so I'm glad you finally did something about that. Thanks. But you know what? This is not... It's not structured, you know, I mean, the thing, look at, you know, we just do whatever the hell we want to do. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, just, when you had the radio show, the only difference was we were all spilling pizza and lasagna on us, and they were constantly bringing food in, right. and Les Paul would come in and play his guitar, and, you know, Frankie Hudak, you know, shout out to Frankie Hudak, by the way, uh, you know, we come in and do some crazy things, so it was, uh, it, it's a fantastic thing. I'm just, congratulations on this. Well, thank and, you. And it's just, it's great to see you again, and thank you for having me on. What have you been doing now? Um, well, a couple of things. Uh, I was, uh, I was here 
at uh, Mark Becker's New Life Expo, and the New Life Expo is at the New Yorker Hotel. It was just this last weekend, and uh, I'm going to be back in uh, June at his, he's got a yoga sort of health expo coming up in June, also at the New Yorker, but he does like three shows a year here, and he's a great sort of force for metaphysics and, the, uh, and new spirituality in, uh, in New York City. And I uh, just finished a book called Sands of Time, uh, which is about uh, government research into time travel and, and uh, black ops and shadow government and things behind the scenes. And uh, actually wrote a book called Veil of the Antichrist to Pray in Cordoba, which we tried to get published two years ago. And the publishers thought it was too crazy because we predicted that all these governments would actually collapse in the Middle East and that we would then see uh, the guy in the blue turban, uh, you know, an Islamic leader, a religious leader, the, you know, the 12th Iman, the, uh, the veiled prophet, the great Mahdi actually be introduced into this entire deal. So uh, kind of like if Nostradamus was writing adventure novels, I guess, uh, you know, sort of a Dan Brown sort of thing. And, and meanwhile, just been uh, uh, just trying to stay out of trouble. Well, you don't call yourself a psychic. Uh, intuitive is probably it. I think psychic is probably. Is that why? Sort of bad be, why word. do you call yourself intuitive? Because it's a better word, or because you think that it's a different quality? Well, it's it's uh, you know years ago I used to work on the uh, I used to work on a lot of the psychic hotlines. I was on you know Caprina Kincaid and Kenny Kingston and Dionne Warwick and all that. And it's interesting. They were the commercials, and then they would feed everything into a uh, kind of a boiler room where we would then you know do a lot of the uh, uh, psychic and intuitive stuff. But again, I I, I teach. I teach techniques of remote viewing. I teach techniques of, of how people can actually look into the future. When you should uh, tell people what remote viewing is. I think it's something you do. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, ex exactly. Well, remote viewing was something that was uh, that was originally developed by the Stanford Research Institute for the United States military, and uh, it means the ability to view something that's remote from you in, in not only space but time as well. So the idea was to come up with a system where they could take military people with the psychic abilities of a bag of hammers, basically, and uh, sit them in a chair and, and give them some training and, ha and allow them to be able to kind of project forward to see uh, you know, various targets. And so uh, I've been very, very prescient because I've combined that with a lot of training that I got when I lived in the, lived in the, in the Far East. I lived in India, and I was in a monastery in Nepal for the better part of a year, and I studied with the Dalai Lama. Why? Um, just had a, well, it's, it's kind of funny. It's sort of the religious, the religious aspect of it. Started out Irish Catholic, and then we became uh, like Lutherans and then Episcopalians, and then my mother, we were then Southern Baptists, um, who invented waterboarding, by the way, because uh, if you hold somebody underwater long <laughs> enough, you'll believe just about anything. That's called baptism. Exactly. Knock it off. Exactly. And, uh, uh, and then my, uh, my parents got divorced, and my mother married a, 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 my wonderful Jewish stepfather. And now my wife, uh, Melissa, is Mormon. So uh, one way or another, I'm getting into heaven. And then I, I study Buddhism. Or, or you're going to hell. Yeah, or one way or another. Either, either I'm very cool or very confused. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure All right, which, now so. the Dalai Lama's resigned. Now, how no. could you resign as a Dalai what? Lama? When did this happen? This week. Really? I didn't yeah, hear about this at all. He's going to step down. How do, you, how do you step down when you're a savior? Well, that's kind of like the Pope stepping down, I well, guess. Well, no, is. because the Pope is a human being yes. all the time. Right. But the, uh, the divine... Who's never wrong, who's infallible. Well, he's infallible according to church law. Well, which means you never want to play him in basketball because well, you can't no, call him for a No, because that's foul, not a church so. law. You don't want to play him in bingo. Yes, because uh, he's infallible, yes, exactly. The Dalai Lama has decided to not be the divine anymore. You know, I feel very bad that I don't know this. I've literally been in a bubble, but I've been working well, so hard. Well, that's right. You're hanging around these talk shows. Yeah, you know? that You're I not going to learn anything. anything from talk shows. I know. Well, because except, they talk. Except this one. Well, you need a listen show. Okay. Not a talk one. But I learned some great things sitting in the back. I, used, I watched a guy eat a light bulb yeah. who had a red shirt on, obviously, so the, the blood doesn't show up when it drips down his chin. <laughs> uh, I watched Did you notice thing. he took the remnants with him? I, I did yeah. notice that, yes. And I he's, noticed a, a, a fabulous gentleman here who was doing a, a who was, is he going to play Curly in the movie? He's, he's up for it. Oh, he is? Farley Brothers. Okay. You yeah. know, because I think somebody like James Mason should play Mo. I think, in the Three Stooges. <laughs> Don't you think? Wait, ready. Here's my James Mason present. Larry, Curly, I'm going to have to poke you both in the eyes very hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> now let's whoop out of here, fellas. Uh, whoop, 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 whoop. There you go. That's also Sam Neill playing well, Mo. Yeah, because uh, he's gone for a while. Yeah, exactly. You know, so James Mason go. hasn't worked in a number of yes, years. Yes, I'm going to play my <laughs> organ now. No, 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 no. I'm Captain Nemo. Yes. So, so. how was the convention? Uh, the convention was fantastic. We have, uh, again, there were fantastic speakers. Uh, uh, Diana, Blackstone, uh, Diana Brownstone, who's a very close friend of mine, is a, a fantastic astrologer. Stacy Breeze uh, was there, who's a great uh, intuitive psychic. You know, Mark Becker puts a fantastic show together. But were you all three together in the same room? Yeah, no, it's all. Uh, what have you decided is going to happen collectively? Uh, collectively what did you all agree on collectively? Well, collectively speaking, uh, there were some a lot of disagreements on it. I'm, I, maybe I shouldn't say what they were saying there, but. 
Uh, for example, back in the 90s when I was teaching remote viewing to classes here, uh, we took a look at collectively, and this is with a blind target, this is my simply saying, okay, 3824 Aqua in an envelope, and the sealed question in the envelope was, describe New York City in the year 2020, as an example, and take it into the future. Fair enough. And it was very interesting, New York City was, was still here, uh, nobody saw the World Trade Centers, which I thought was very interesting, this is like 96, 97 or so, they saw a single tower actually up in its place which we thought was odd because that's what they're building now. Right. Um, the biggest problem that New York had at that time was uh, a great deal of flooding. There, there, there was problems with plumbing, pipes were bursting, uh, subways were bursting unusable. Uh, there may have been a mass suicide because people were told they had to move to New Jersey, I think, but uh, I'm just kidding about that part. <laughs> but, uh, 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 but the city was still here and it was just very uncomfortable to live. People just started moving out because of some, some real challenges. There was a... Uh, there seemed to be a consensus on, uh, I don't know if I can make this prophecy on the air or not, and not get in trouble for, for what I was going to say, but it had to do with a, uh, a possible terrorist action against New York, possibly in the near future. Again? But, another one? Well, it had to do with, it's not quite so bad. One of the things that I saw many years ago was uh, a ship or a boat that was actually coming in that was then stopped uh, about 50 miles out with a very, very large explosion that actually came off, came off the boat, which then affected New York. Uh, but uh, it didn't bring really a, a lot of harm. The biggest are we, we going to stop being the cops of the world? That's my question. No, well, you know what's horrible about that is you look at it from sort of a New World Order standpoint, there's a couple of interesting things that have just gone on. If you will notice that the, that the Justice Department has changed its website. It is no longer the American flag. It is now jet black. And uh, it is interesting that the Justice Department is saying things like, we accept the common law as the law of nations. And the, the most disturbing thing for me is that the U.S. Army changed its motto. Did you hear about this this week? No. They changed its motto, where there used to be an army of one and all that. Their yeah. motto is, I'm not kidding, take a look at it, a global force, dot, 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 for good. Oh. And again, does this mean that we are going to be the cops of the world? Are we going to literally get involved in every single conflict? And, uh, you know, again, Obama's down doing the samba in Brazil, I guess, while, while we're literally putting boots on the ground. And you'll see that within the next week because we've moved two combat carrier groups in. So we're looking at a land war in Libya that's going to that's gonna last quite some time. And if you look at it astrologically speaking, we did it under what's called a void of course moon, which is a very, very bad time to go in, which means this war is it, it's not going to go well. Things are getting very, very screwed up. And, uh, and I think go very, very badly for Obama and for the United States. When are we going to have your website? Uh, uh, it's actually up now. It's actually uh, SeanDavidMorton.com. Uh, and we can and see all, all of your, your stuff. Well, I mean, I'm putting it up now. I've, I've got my three books up there. I've got Black Seraph. I've got uh, Veil of the Antichrist. We've got Sands of Time. Uh, I'm working on a new book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to Astral Travel. Everything you always wanted to know about getting out of your body but we're afraid to ask, and that's with new page, and that's, and that's, I thought that was fun, and that's with, uh, and that's with new page books. Um, but right now I'm focusing on uh, the fantastic things that are happening around 2012. I mean, let's blow some sunshine up people's kilts here. Well, there's some, there's some great medical stuff happening. We got a guy coming out here in just a minute, you okay. know, Vin Catula, yes. who was, uh, uh, he was the chairman for the Parkinson's disease, Yes, you know? and we've got answers for things that are that are that are, have been perplexing us for centuries and you should have replaced art bell you are well, thank you're you. great you're great on the air and you're a good friend and i and i joey really, it's, it's been a, it's been an honor and a pleasure knowing you for the 33 years that i've been here i don't know if i can stay or not but it's uh yeah if, you can say you move over on a chair and we'll because you know my, my mother was president of the national health federation for 37 years and had four bestseller selling books and Warren Kennedy Salomon, so I'd just, love to hear what the gentleman Hang out for a second and, and we'll bring Vin out here. Be right back. Sean David Morton, you can go to his site. Be right back. When New York celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. Yeah. It's where Cat oh Greenleaf God. gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Tell me something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor.
We have a contest, you know, we're going to give away a, a week in Staten Island as a grand prize. The second prize, <laughs> second prize is two weeks in Staten Island. <laughs> we got, uh, got Vin Catula here. Now, Vin's uh, son is a good friend. He's a caterer to the stars, Stephen. But that has nothing to do with Vin, <laughs> who has uh, uh, helped to do so many things in our community. I, and if you are from out of town, you don't know that New York has uh, some boroughs. Staten Island is one of the progressive ones. We even have that very inexpensive bridge that you pay $140 to go over every time you, you go through that easy pass. But you know, uh, we, have, we have on Staten Island uh, some culture, which is not available in the rest of the other boroughs because of Ben here. Uh, he was uh, instrumental in giving us a zoo, Staten Island Zoo, can you imagine? A, a really wonderful one. And, and an art community that's outstanding. And now the latest thing, because he's inventive, as the chairperson of Parkinson's, which is his, uh, his great passion and life and has done so much for, for uh, helping people who, have, who suffer from Parkinson's disease, long-term illnesses. And he has now decided to take his, his retirement unseriously and built this ocean breeze indoor track that's to rival the world in Olympics. I think the Greeks are coming over here to learn from you. Uh, and, and speaking of that, we have with us Bill Jen Kunis, who is a former Olympic high jumper. Hi, Bill. How are you? Nice Wonderful to, be here. to have you in our in our presence tonight. Nice to be and here. You're sitting next to my friend Sean Martin, in case uh, anybody right. forgot sure, him a minute here. ago. We have short attention span. <laughs> and and then we got next to Vin here. Vin, how are you? How are you, Vin? Say hello. Hello, hello, Joey. I love you. I've sat in your I'll house at Christmas eight time many times, and in yeah. your chair. Yes. Without you knowing. <laughs> <laughs> but I never replaced you. No. <laughs> no one could. No one. Thank could. you. Mark Irving is here. Hi, Mark. How, how are you doing, Joey? So, Mark, how long have you been working on this project here? Oh, a little bit over a year. Um, but it, it's it's uh, been uh, a gleam in Ben's eye for some time. I know if you if you know him well, you know he's constantly reinventing himself, and and he's a hard guy to say no to. So he always manages to draw me into very worthwhile projects. And I know it's something that the Staten Island community has been after for a long time. So when he decided that. He didn't know what to do with himself, couldn't retire, that he was the right guy to tap for getting it done. And so you're going to build this huge indoor track for kids the, to begin uh, with, right? Yeah, it's the city of New York that's building the, uh, the track under the mayor's uh, aggressive program of giving facilities uh, throughout the city of New York. This is a $41 million indoor running track. Now, we... Uh, there's a group of people on Staten Island, Staten Island Track, who have been trying to get this built for uh, something like 15 years. Wow. And the borough president backed it, and uh, men of the caliber of uh, Bill Jankunas uh, needed a facility such as this. So everyone had to go into Manhattan. In my competitive days, I used to throw in an armory when I was competing in the 35-pound weight throw and the shot, we never participated in an arena, so we always had to go to a, an outer area. This is going to have uh, a facility which will be computerized, eight-lane, indoor, banked track, probably the fastest in the United States. When will it be world. built? It's being built right at the moment. And as it'll we talk. be ready when? It'll be ready in about a year from this September. Good. So we could take the Second Avenue subway there. Oh. <laughs> uh, You'll be able to take the water tunnel. We're negotiating <laughs> with uh, uh, U.S. Track and Field to come Wait, here. You know, you know we're, we cut a little short on time here tonight. Bill, I want to say something to you. I want to, first of all, congratulations. You're a real champion. And, well, and, and we love you for all of your efforts. And especially now, we need to have a champion and you're going to run on that track? Uh, actually, the, the facility is being built about two blocks from my home. But will so. you actually run on it, oh, or course. are you going to jump no, on it? No, <laughs> I'll be running on it. Hopefully, have, they're going to have full facilities there to jump on that. It's going to be for the use of the track. How do we look for community? Up? We have a website? Yes, uh, statenislandtrack.org is the website, statenislandtrack.org. And we'll see all and about it. But you're going to come back, too. Well, I, I have to come back because people are going to be coming here from all over the world. And we're to going to need money to, to And to we need uh, <laughs> a few million dollars to run this operation. 
All right, well, let me let me sign off, and then we'll talk about it. Let's smile beer. There are 13,000 cabs in New York City, but there's only one that pays you. Climb into the cash cab, and I'll quiz you all the way to your destination. As the meter clicks, the questions get harder, and the stakes get higher. If you get stumped, you shout out for help on the phone Alice. or off the street. Can I ask you a question? But be careful, because in this rig, it's three strikes, and you are out. So what do you say? You in? A lot better than the ones he got in Detroit. That show, a real stinker, say some of the folks who turned out for it. Good morning, I'm Dick Brennan. And I'm Heather Noward. It is 6.30 on this Monday, April the 4th. Don't you like those headlines? We go, the president, oh, and then Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. <laughs> but I think we're all over the winning tour, and it looks like even his own audience is over it. Yep. Walking out in mid-show. in mid -show. Yeah, we'll bring you the details on that. Inez Rosales, in the meantime, has a look at the traffic for us today on this uh, rainy Monday morning. Good morning, hey, Inez. Good morning. Yeah, we have an accident right now on the Long Island Expressway. We're keeping an eye on. The accident is westbound by Junction Boulevard, but it's already causing delays heading through that area. I'll tell you more about that coming up. Right, we choose to be positive 60s today. That's yeah, nice. that's 60s. good. Yeah. That's the good stuff. I think that's what most folks will really be focusing on because the rain really hasn't been that big of a deal, and a lot of folks probably slept through it since it came through earlier this morning. And now it really doesn't look that bad outside. Let's take a look at the uh, radar and show you what's happening right now. Uh, mainly over Connecticut, back over the east end of Long Island, you still have some showers, but other than that, much drier conditions for just about everyone else. So we can handle that. Now let's go to the maps and show you what we have uh, with the radar and satellite. Light, put them in motion. Well, we've got the warm front and the showers coming through with that. Now we're still capable of popping up some more showers out there, but it doesn't look likely that we're going to see a lot more rain out there. What we are going to notice is the warm temperatures. Everybody loves this. 46 out at Central Park right now, 42 in Poughkeepsie, and we're going up into the 60s before you know it. 62 by lunchtime, high temperature of 66 today. And some showers today, but more showers and storms are coming in for you tomorrow. That looks like it could get a little bit nasty tomorrow morning. Morning, but we'll have more details coming up in a few here. Heather and Dick. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Well, we are following developing news out of Washington this morning. Just a short time ago, President Obama released this documentary style video officially announcing that he is running for re-election in 2012. The, the video was sent to supporters via text messages, emails. Uh, the team will also file papers today with the Federal Election Commission. And uh, Mr. Obama will host a fundraiser in Chicago next week, his home base for the campaign. All right, game on, right? Yes, game oh, on. Okay, well, uh, back here in the New York area, please on Long Island are getting ready to close off a stretch of Ocean Parkway this morning. They will resume their search for human remains after five bodies were recently found. Yeah, some believe it to be the work of a serial killer. Uh, Fox News' Carolyn Gussoff is live in Gilgo Beach with more. I, I would imagine, Carolyn, there's that much doubt of that, that some of these people were killed by a serial killer. Yeah, not much doubt, certainly among uh, police, FBI. They are certainly working, uh, Dick and Heather, with the theory that they have a serial killer here. They have five bodies now all together. They do believe that at least four of them are the work of uh, the same person because they were all wrapped in burlap. This fifth body, though, not entirely clear that it's part of...